seven grow tall. There is a thirty day risk free offer going on now. Ah, that's easy. One eight seven seven grow tall. Or buy it on the web at heightmax.com. Order today and grow taller with Heightmax. Heightmax is a subsidiary of Sunny Health Nutrition Technology. holidays and all that other good stuff. Oh boy, oh boy. We're going to talk about people today, honey. We got, um, mm, I got a flavor flave, a story to share with you all. Um, blah, 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 so on and so forth. We can talk about the Hollywood breakups and whatnot. I was talking about that yesterday. Never got a chance to finish. Um, we don't have any company coming in, but that's great because that gives us a chance to really get on the telephones today, right? 866-GET-WENDY. That's my number. And also, guess what? Now, you know Mary J. Blige. And you know Bobby Brown will be our Don and our Diva for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. But what you don't know is that a Don that has had a phenomenal year has confirmed his presence in the building. Another Don. Oh, yes. And I'll make that announcement during the hour of truth. Uh, so you keep it where you got it. This is where the excitement is on your dial. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, check this out. This is Flavor Flame. This is Chuck D, Public Enemy, number one. Hi, this is Reverend Al Sharpton, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Uh-huh. Yeah, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Made it. Shout out to everybody outside of the New York tri-state area, everybody in L.A., everybody in Memphis and Springfield, Massachusetts, everybody in Hartford, everybody down south in Columbia, South Carolina, all surrounding areas, Shreveport, what's going on, Milwaukee, how you doing? Here's the thing. Shout out to everybody in Louisiana as well. Um, here in New York City, the city is absolutely paralyzed by a, a transit strike that hasn't happened in over 20 years. And when it happened over 20 years ago, at least it was in April, where people were able to walk and kind of enjoy the spring weather, but hate the fact that they're walking like 100 blocks or, you know, 10 miles or whatever it is. I mean, the transit strike here in New York at this point has the city paralyzed. And I am so proud of my squad because by hook or by crook, everybody got here. 
They carpooled. I just love being able to work with a team of people who nobody knew each other before working here at the show. And now, you know, they off hours, they go out for drinks, go shopping for hair. They spend the night at each other's house. How you doing? And I mean, I mean, the, you know, and I, by and large, I have an all girl team with the exception of two fellas, Goose and Trev. And everybody came in and everybody is just working together. And I just want to, you know, publicly thank my squad and shout out to everybody in the New York Tri-State area who's in that struggle. You know, if you're out today, you know what? This is probably the time when your when your boss is testing your your um your value as a, as an employee your 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 you know your hustle the hustler in you and stuff you know I, it's easy to say I'm going to take the day off because I you know I can't get a, a train in so I'm going to go Christmas shopping or whatever but your employer is taking note to things like that and when the budgets really do get crunched and it might not be this year it might not be in the next twelve months but eighteen months from now unfortunately your asses are going to be the first ones that they look at. <laughs> Because I know I'd be that way. Like, if I was the king of all, you know, decisions, I'd be like, okay, let's look back to the transit strike. Who made it into work? Who walked? Who, you know, who drove? Who picked up strangers? Just, I mean, you know, like, to, to drive into the city, of which I'm one of those people, I live in New Jersey, uh, between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m., you can't enter the city with uh, less than four people in your car. Well, you know, I don't know four people, and I'm not picking up some strangers to be killed on the way. <laughs> So I waited. I went to the food town this morning. I did a whole bunch of other stuff. In the meantime, you know, I like to get here. Well, okay. My new rule for 2006 is that I want to be in the office every day by 11 o'clock in the morning just because. So I'm starting to warm it up in 2005 because 2006 is right around the corner. I want to be prepared. But, um... You know, I waited and I got in and stuff like that. And, and then just, you know, shout out to everybody, you know, in that struggle. What's up, Phil? Phil says, Phil, a.k.a. Maniac, he's 34 years old. He says he's currently dating a 46-year-old woman. She's a goddess. Her name is Dakota Williams. She got me listening to your show, Phil says. The problem is she always thinks I'm cheating because of my style, which isn't shabby. So please tell everyone within the radio ear that I love Dakota Williams. Please advise me what I should do in the future. <coughs> Phil Barnes, I think you pretty much put that on a smash right there. You've declared your love for Dakota Williams. So now, <coughs> stick it extra hard uh, for the show. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Let's go to the telephone. Uh, Tara is on line one, and she's 39, and she has a friend who's losing her sense of smell. This is, I guess, related to the Foxy Brown thing, losing sense of hearing. Hey, Tara. Hey, no, How? this is in reference to you, you telling your story on Friday. Oh, yes, my sense of smell. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing about it is it happened to my girlfriend. See? And so it we thought that she was lying yeah. because she's like one of those greedy people. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, if you can't taste or if you can't, why are you eating that? Yeah. She said, because I remember eating it before. I exactly. Know. But the thing is. You thought she was looking for attention? No, not that. Oh. We just, because she would eat as if, or, you know, and she would just put on her perfume, like, you know, every day. I'm like, well, then how do you know how it smells? She's like, I can't. But I took her to have the surgery, and I sat there with her with the doctor, hmm. and he broke it down to me. He said, you know what? He said, she can tell if something's salty or if something's sweet. Yes. But to tell you what it tastes like or to smell, she smells nothing. Right. Like, we can't pick out the cumin. No. You know, or, or the special herbs from the herb garden in, in the food. But we, we can taste the garlic. We can taste the salt. We can taste the pepper. You know, the interesting thing is, is that when this happened to me uh, two years ago, and now mind you... Like, like for, for your girlfriend, does she still buy perfumes that she bought what, back when she could remember? Or does she venture out and buy new ones? Because I don't let buy me, new let ones. Let me tell you what happened. What? She had a, a, a sinus infection that she, because she didn't have any insurance or anything, she ignored it. Yeah. She just had the surgery done um, last month. Mm -hmm. What the doctor told her, there's no guarantee. Yeah, which is why I never had the surgery. And let I, me tell you, and she was in a lot of pain. Yeah, you know what? Because I'm not having any sinus surgery. That's okay. I'm but there was a big blockage back there. And uh -huh. There was a lot of tissue that had to be removed. Well, for me, I already had my MRI and a plethora of, um, you know, x-rays and stuff like that. There's no tissue. It's like a crazy thing. So, everybody, this is relating to Foxy Brown. And I know, you know, the majority of people, when they first heard Foxy say, she was losing her sense of hearing. Um, everybody was probably like, you know, no way, no way. And I would have been right there with you all, except that I held on to my secret until I just told you on Friday that 
when I lost my sense of smell, I just woke up in the morning and like I could not smell. And then and then it would come back maybe 24 hours later where I could smell a little bit of something. But I was going through the process until eventually it was like I can't smell. And I can we can smell, but we just don't smell the way you smell. Yeah. Like, like if we go out, she's like, if my deodorant gives out, tell me. Exactly. I'm like, girl, I'm not telling you that. She's like, you know, I don't know. My like, whole my whole <laughs> inner circle already knows my deal. Do I, it, it is my deodorant give out? And I see, I fortunately, like, and like my husband will buy me new perfumes, but he'll tell me how they smell. But but I only feel authentically comfortable with what I remember. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it is really something. I had to call her. I said, oh my God, Wendy has the same problem. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to reveal situation. it to you guys. When it first happened to me, I didn't want to reveal it. Because you guys, you know, no, you know, I'm always talking about something dealing with my health. Either I'm going because I might be going blind with the thyroid disease or I'm having a miscarriage or, you know, I'm just a medical mess. So when that happened, I was like, I'm absolutely not telling the listeners this. They will definitely think I'm like girl who cried wolf trying to look for attention. But when Foxy came out with this thing with losing her hearing, I just kind of wanted to side with Foxy to say, you all, it does happen. And I don't know why it happens. I don't know why God does this to some people, you know. And you could say, well, Wendy, that's because Foxy was nasty and you talk about people. Okay, well, maybe that is it. Maybe that is it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I just thank God for small things. Like, I had my sense of smell for the majority of my life. I was able to smell a newborn baby and, and all like that. I the thing you. that used to get me the most upset was, um, you know, at the time that I was losing my smell, my son was still in the pull-ups. And I could never smell <laughs> whether he wet or not. I would have to, you know, put my hand down. You know, or just... Or squeeze. Yeah, you know, and like when he comes in from basketball practice or whatever he's going to do when he's a, a, a you know, when he, you know, grows and starts playing sports, I won't be able to say, gosh, you smell really funky, get in the bathtub. So instead, everybody in my... Well, me and my son, we I take... <laughs> two showers a day. <laughs> I'm always on the bidet. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm always spraying uh, perfume. I'm always chewing gum. I don't want my breath to stink. I go to the dentist more than, than most people because I'm always like, you know, check me for adult halitosis. Check me for this. Check me for that. So, you know, truth be told, a lot of my medical team is dealing with smells. Well, the doctor told her, he said, just wait the next three to five months. That's what they told me, and, too. And, uh... If it comes back, I'll let you know, but so far... Nothing. nothing. It, it, you know what? Mine hasn't come back, and I spent a lot of time crying to myself. I didn't even reveal it to my parents and my family and stuff until, you they know... probably wouldn't believe you. I'm we did not believe yeah, you. We yeah. We did not believe her. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way... You're eating the way you eat, and you can't take. You know what? That was the one thing that I was real happy with. I said, "Well, gosh, this is the quick way to lose weight." Is because I will no longer want food. But the fact of the matter is, you still remember how certain things tasted. But I tell you what: if I walked into your house and you were making a full dinner, I would not be able to smell uh, the smells in the house. That's exactly how she is. Exactly. Wow. I understand. I understand completely because, you know, my friend went through it. But when you told the story Friday, I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it happens. Listen, I'm, I'm grateful. Nice talking to you. Yeah. I know you got to go. You At too. Work, I have to go myself. You too. Thank you. But if you. it comes back, I'll reach back out to you. Oh, please do. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, you know, because about two months ago, I was telling you all I was going, you know, for the thyroid uh, as it relates to Graves' disease in your eyes. They wanted to check my eyes to see if the, my muscles were squeezing so hard and I was a candidate for blindness, which is related to thyroid and Graves' disease. And I was like, oh, no, Lord, please not two senses gone. Please not, please not, you know, the smell and, and the eyesight. I'm like a mess. Oh, my husband's telling me I'll buy you new eyes. I'll buy you a new, you know, yeah. And you gotta love that. But I just like my my son will say to me now because you know he's too young. I can't explain to him, you know. So I'm saying, "Mommy, what's that smell?" I'm like, "I don't know, honey. What does it smell like?" You know, yeah. Well, don't cry for me, Argentina. I've cried many tears over it, but I'm grateful for the small things in life. Like I'm not going to be going blind. And like I can hear because I, you know, since Foxy made her declaration, I've thought long and hard. I think about her a lot, you know, in my in my off time. Um, I would rather lose my sense of smell than lose my sense of hearing, you know, and live in a world of silence. Well, I'm talking things, and then I couldn't work my job between people because radio doesn't revolve around, you know. Wendy, man. Yo, 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 what up, y'all? This is Why Clef John. I'll see you at this year's Guns and Divas Extravaganza. Cheer. The Wendy Williams Experience. 
The WBLS Christmas party was a party with a purpose. The people get hang out, get food. It was a really nice atmosphere. Grown and sexy people. It was excellent. I got a chance to meet a lot of nice people. Everything was really nice. Everything. A party with a purpose. Party definitely had a purpose. Special thanks to our performers. Hey, what's up? It's your man, Jaheen. This is Vinny Grant. I want to thank WBLS for inviting me to their party with a purpose. Thanks to all y'all who came out to party with a purpose. It was wonderful, and I can't wait to do it again. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, y'all. Also, special thanks to Guapale and Cameo. Our sponsors, the Department of Health, Razak, Jamaica Bid, and Preferred Equity Solutions. Along with a big thanks to you. All our WBLS listeners who came out to support WBLS was able to present Dave one with a check for ten thousand dollars spreading a little cheer for the holiday season and throughout the year oh, yeah, everybody in the wbls staff y'all really have to brother up thank you we're 107.5 wbls every day all day Good morning. today's r&b and classic soul okay and the wendy williams experience don't forget to check out steve harvey in the mornings he's bringing it with jackie and Ann and the whole squad. Shout out to Tommy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hey, this hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is being brought to you by Nissan Driven. Let's get quickly to line number three. Mary's there, and she's uh, with the new... Hey, Mayor. Yes, hi, Wendy. How are you? You're with the New York City Transit Authority? Yes, I am, Wendy. Talk to us, honey. Yes, Wendy. I just want to shout out to all my brothers and sisters out there on the picket line, and I just want to say that we was forced into this. They didn't want to go, and for the ride in public... That um, we did not want to strike, but we was forced into striking. And that um, we would hope they would support us. I support you. I mean, I understand that you need, that you all need, whatever it is, you know, that is going on with your, your, your uh, workplace. You know, uh, you need to go for yours. Unfortunately, it's at the hands of, you know, paralyzing the city and millions of people. But, uh, you know, what can you do? So what are you doing today? Right now, I'm giving support um, here, and I'm supporting... Here, here where? Where are you there? I'm at work right now. I'm one of the supervisors, so I, I cannot strike. Oh, I understand. I understand. Okay, but I have brothers and sisters <coughs> out there mm-hmm. that we give 100% support to. Yeah. And they don't... They have families. They have to eat like everybody else. Yeah. And the, the governor didn't come through. Yeah. And um, it was a slap in our face. Yeah. It was a slap in all the municipal workers' face, all the union workers' face. Yeah. You know? And, you know, we have families. We want respect like everybody else. Yeah. All right, Mayor. Thanks for calling the show. Wendy, I would like to say, I would like to also say the slay lady says hello. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thank and you. how you doing? How you doing? I'm all right. All right. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you, Wendy. Love you. Yeah. Love you, too. All right. Hey, Goose, Thanks. we can take um, another phone call. Yeah, by the way, everybody, WBLS, we're proud sponsors here of TV 411. That's your chance to improve your reading and writing and math skills. You watch TV 411. It's on Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. For more information about what's going on with the radio station, you can always log on to our website at WBLS.com. Hey, woman. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you today? Very good. I just want to commend you on coming in. I'm glad to be here. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, yeah. Well. And a comment about the lady I just called. I am so very upset with them. Yeah. I know they have to do what they have to do, but yeah. after, you could have did it at a better time. This is not the time to do it. It's the holidays. It's freezing cold. It's freezing. You know, I mean, I'm very upset. I mean, I don't know about you. Have you had your office Christmas party yet? Yes, we did. See, we had our WBLS office Christmas party, but I was planning on having the Wendy Williams Experience office Christmas party tomorrow, and it's just like ruined that. Yeah. So what we're gonna do then is we're just all gonna ha- we're gonna you know have to you know I'm gonna order in some catered food and have it here at the radio station. But I was planning on you know taking the squad out and, you know to a, a tablecloth place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Oh well. I just well. Get a chance to save money. So I just wanna. <laughs> Uh, commend Too everyone bad. that did come into work. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, thank you very much. And thank you for calling and listening. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Shout out to everybody in Harlem. What's happening in Harlem? Ounce by ounce. Love you. Ounce by ounce is where I got my hair for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. They're on uh, 7th Avenue. Up there at like 135th and 136th Street. Shout out to all my people at Ounce by Ounce up in Harlem. Got that ounce by ounce bounce for Thursday night. Hello? Hello? 
How you doing? Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi. I want to respond to the caller who just called in and said that the transit workers could have picked a better time to do it. Go ahead. What better time is there than freezing weather, Christmas season, people can't get around and shop and yeah. do what they need to do? What, what better time to paralyze the city than I, the busiest time? I have to say, if you're going to strike, <laughs> strike hard so your enemy Duh. can't get up. Exactly. So, I, as much as I hate that, you know, everybody is being inconvenienced. Uh-huh. You got if you're going to make a statement, you got to make it big what and bold. What do you say, Wendy? Go go hard, hard go or go home? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm a commuter and I have to walk or get home. That's where I can't like everybody else. But I mean, I think they picked the best time. If you ask me, me too. <laughs> okay, take care. Happy holidays. You too. Bye bye. I'm just glad I don't work until two o'clock because I swear. What about people like Mark Jordan? He works from ten to ten to two. Doesn't he live over there um, in Fort Lee? How does he get into the city? What's he sleeping on a couch? Oh, you know, the radio station. They roll out the red card. They put the jocks up in hotels and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that's oh, nice. Oh, oh, Goose, I'm sorry. <laughs> they didn't put you up in a hotel? <laughs> oh. <laughs> he said, hello. Wendy? Yes? Hi. Hi. I'm calling because I want to know, I know this is probably not the most appropriate time, but are there still any tickets for the Dons and Davis, and where can they be purchased? Okay, where do you live? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Are you ready with your pencil and paper? Of course. Okay. Let me get you your Brooklyn telephone numbers. Okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. They've got two places in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. L and John's Barbershop. Okay. Okay. Now, you're going to call them at 718-385-0440. Okay. And here's another place in Brooklyn. Fulani Clothing. Milani's closing. You ready? Yes. 718-789-0464. Mm -hmm. 0464. Okay, so now with this strike going on, hey, it's Don's, going on? Don's, are you kidding me? Yes. Don, Don's and Divas is, you know, doors open up at like, you know, 9 o'clock at night at the spot. And, and and not for nothing, I'm not expecting that anybody at the party is going to be actually taking the subway to get there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get on the subway after, you know, all them hours of drinking. You might never get your stuff. You show up in the, in the train yard with no clothes on, snatch balls. <laughs> hey, this is nice hair. I think I'll take it. You know, whenever I pack, I never put my hair in my... In my um, check bags I always because I'm always thinking like somebody's gonna say hey this is nice hair I might as well keep <laughs> over at the airport shout out to the bag searchers okay well thanks a lot <laughs> well you're very welcome and listen keep it here because at four o'clock during the hour of truth mm -hmm. I'm gonna knock your socks off with a man who has had an amazing year and he has confirmed for the Dons and Divas extravaganza okay I'm gonna listen oh yes okay thank you right. by the way uh, you know what shout out to Bobby Brown you know he's gonna be there on Thursday night don't forget tonight at 11 o'clock clock bravo is running the being bobby brown christmas special i don't know about you i will be there we'll take some more phone calls can we hello we'll take one more okay goose hello hello hi it's wendy hi wendy how you doing good welcome to the show today i can't believe i've got you nice to have you here you the phrase so I just want to say I enjoy you so much. Thank I you. tried to get you so many times. So God bless you. Thank you. And I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You too. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God, I got to cancel my colonic. <laughs> I was supposed to have a colonic at 8.30 tomorrow morning, but I only have one person in the car, so I... <laughs> Maybe I'll get it before the Laugh Factory tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The place I guess stays open until 9 o'clock at night. I'll go get my rooter tooted, and then I'll go over to the club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I got to have a flat stomach for the Dons and Divas. You know, I need that last, you know, cleanse. You know, just smooth everything, flatten it out. Get rid of, you know, last week's Wiener schnitzel. Hello? Oh, wait, no. You know what? No hello. No hello. Let's continue with the break. Okay, so it's Wendy Williams' experience nonstop till 7 o'clock. Then it's Vaughn Harper in the quiet storm on 107.5 WBLS. Meet Mary J. Blige, Tuesday, December 20th at 6 p.m. at FYE Rockefeller Center, 51st Street and 6. Mary will be signing copies of her new CD, The Breakthrough, featuring smash singles, Be Without You, MJB to MVP, and Can't Hide Love, featuring Jay-Z, in stores December 20th.
Mary J. Blige, live in person, signing her new CD, The Breakthrough, Tuesday, December 20th at 6 p.m. at FYE Rockefeller Center, 51st and 6th. MJB, your voice. Space is limited, so reserve your copy today to guarantee your spot in line. FYE for your entertainment, music, movies, games, and more. When you're in the mood for some home-cooked food, but that real good feel, good down home taste. Make it easy on yourself. Get glory for food. Just about the best. Help yourself to some The number one selling canned greens in the country, Glory Food Season Canned Collard Greens is the people's choice. Dinner for one or the entire family, Glory Food's savory frozen entrees and side dishes, including chicken, smoked sausage, and rice, has something for everyone. And Glory Food's fresh cut bag turnip greens will be a healthy addition to your family meals. When you're in the mood for some home food, but that real good feel good down home taste. Make it easy on yourself. Look for Glory Foods at your local supermarket. You've heard it before. Dude, my mom only drove it to the grocery store and back. Yeah, right. Consider this. Ford certified pre-owned vehicles have to pass a rigorous 115-point inspection. And they get six years, 75,000-mile powertrain limited warranty coverage. And right now, you can get financing as low as 3.9%. Ford Quality Check Certified Pre-Owned. If we don't certify it, it's just used. Not all buyers will qualify for Ford Credit Limited Term APR financing on select vehicles. Take delivery from dealer stock by 1231.05. See dealer for warranty details or visit FordCPO.com. Hi, I'm Gloria Lee, account executive at WBLS. Happy holidays from my family to your family at 107.5 WBLS. What's up? This your boy Trey Sons. How you doing? 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 Six hours. Hey. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah.
This is Bill Bellamy. Oh, what's up? This is Heather Hunter. Hey, this is Jenna Jameson, and I'm the number one porn star in the world, and you're listening to The Wendy Williams Experience. I just unwrapped my blow pop. I'm about to get all in. Next thing I hear, <laughs> the applause. Damn it. Mm. So Macy Gray, everybody, is featured in an upcoming episode of Punked. And they say that the show might be a classic. Apparently, she got upset after she arrived to her Macy Gray Music Academy in Los Angeles to find that the building was covered with a tent. <laughs> and she became upset with the fake officials. They told her that the walls were contaminated with black mold and posed a danger to the young children who were enrolled there. She got even more upset when the potential investor decided against putting $250,000 behind the Learning Academy because of the problems. And then she went completely berserk and turned into a maniac, cursing out the foreman on the site and everything after she realized that the workers had arrived at the wrong address. And then here comes Ashton Kutcher. See, that's why I want to smack him in his head because Punk, to me, is not a funny show. Like, I, you know... Like, I'm a gag type of gal and all like that. But, you know, I just, that show just absolutely takes it too far. And I just always feel like punching Ashton Kutcher in the face. <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, what are you going to do? Where all these faxes come from? They just came in? Oh, my gosh. I already have faxes as thick as a phone book. And the show just got started. So, Kate Moss's ex-boyfriend. <coughs> Peter Dougherty. Well, and I don't know whether she's back with him or not. You know, the, the reports are like confusing because, you know, she went to re to rehab here in the States in Arizona. And then he went there and he, I think, is still in there. But a former drug dealer who used to um, deal to Peter Dougherty is begging him to get an HIV test because the drug dealer has been diagnosed with the HIV virus. And the drug dealer's name is Owen O'Dwyer. And he started selling heroin to Peter Dougherty three years ago. And he's saying, listen, he's 33 years old. And yes, he's HIV positive. And he was told by his doctors to contact anyone who he shared a needle with. And that was Peter Dougherty. Which then makes you wonder, was Kate Moss doing it too? It was chances are, birds of a feather. And this is what, this is what um, Owen, the drug dealer, says. I'm terrified Pete might have HIV. I had no idea I had the disease when we were doing drugs. I want him to know that it was not intentional. We shared needles, but we kept our needles. Oh, excuse me. We didn't share needles, but we kept our needles in the same glass. Oh, ew. I'm worried the blood on the needles may have mixed. Oh, well, no doubt. So Peter Dougherty is 26, and he's still in Arizona at the rehab clinic, and he's, it's been unsuccessful for Owen to contact him. But um, Kate Moss, if you're listening, child, your problems just got a lot larger. Mm -hmm. So guess who's coming back to TV? Flavor Flav. <laughs> exactly. Well, they say that this show is kind of like The Bachelor. And I already told you that VH1 was working on this show, but it's for real. The start date is January 1st at 10 p.m. And it's called Flavor of Love. Ew. I'm glad I lost my sense of smell for that one right there. Because, <laughs> mm. 20 single women from all walks of life. Selected for their expressed love of Flavor Flav. So they selected these women based on the fact that they already love Flavor Flav. And they've moved into a nice, nice house in Los Angeles. And they compete for his affection. Can you believe it? 
with the help and advice from a man named Big Rick, who is Flav's giant bodyguard and chauffeur. <laughs> Flav is going to date all the women and weed out the ones who are only after him for his fame and, dare I say, fortune. <laughs> and he's going to end up choosing his one true love. And Bridget Nielsen Gita is not one of the contestants. However, she's going to appear on one of the episodes giving the ladies a lie detector test. And then there's another episode featuring contestants competing in the cooking challenge. And the cooking challenge is going to be judged by Flav's mother. Can you believe it? Plus... There are other surprises throughout the 10-part series, including a clock ceremony, dates at the Red Lobster, <laughs> and a new set of gold teeth signifying true love. My channel, VH1, you've done it again. Damn you, I will be there January 1st at 10 p.m. You need to set Wendy Williams on fire right around that time. In the meantime, we've all known for a very long time that at the end of the day, Jennifer Lopez is a simple woman who would like to have a stable relationship and children. Have you gotten that memo? She's soft and pink. Have you gotten that memo? Through all of the, the sexiness and all of the moguling with the New York productions and those perfumes and the clothes and stuff, you've gotten that memo, right? See, that's one of the things about Jennifer <coughs> that I like identify with in that it makes her like a lot of other women. You know, money doesn't buy true love and, you know, all that other kind of stuff. So now... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, at 36 years old, they're saying that she can't seem to hide her feelings of heartbreak regarding not having a baby yet. And one of her family sources says, here's the quote. When you see Jennifer these days, I think her face can't mask the pain that this holiday season brings by her not yet being pregnant. Her mother and her sister thought she would be in a family way by Christmas, but it hasn't turned out this way, and it made their holiday blue. With her biological clock ticking, oh, I'm getting the wind down. Uh, Jennifer, hang in there. Hang, hang in there, Jennifer, and shout out to all the women in that struggle. You hang in there. And uh, advice hours next, everybody. Keep it here. Wendy, man. Yo, this your boy Trick Daddy Dollars, and I see you at this year's Dons and 7.5 WBLS New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year on Wendy Williams New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy's guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh my lord, have I ready for this day? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I ever heard. The Wendy Williams experience. Take my money. Get down, girl. Go ahead, get down. Hi, I'm Mariah Carey. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Jaheen. Hey, y'all, this is Taryn Ramsey, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy, it's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. Advice I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, 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 
everybody. It's Advice Hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience. But you keep it here, my friends, because next hour we're going to talk about Sanaa Latham. We'll talk about the Jenna Bush cocaine scandal. We'll talk about Halle Berry. We'll talk about Paul Wall. And I'm definitely, next hour, going to announce to you the newest Don in the Dons and Divas extravaganza. And trust mother. I'm mother, by the way. As I tell you, you're gonna, it's, it's a wow. It's a wow. All right, so I'd like to start at Advice Hour with the Wendy Medical Minute. So, what do you think the germiest thing is in the hospital patient room? It's the TV remote control. Yes, a study was done at the University of Arizona. And it says that remotes harbor more bacteria than a toilet bowel Excuse me, a, a, a toilet, excuse me, a toilet handle. They harbor these remotes more bacteria than handrails and more bacteria than doorknobs. One of the bacterium found is something I can't pronounce, but they call it in layman's terms, the superbug. And it's, they say uh, the superbug is... Uh, the cause of 90,000 annual deaths from hospital acquired infections in America. So shout out to all the hospitals shut in. As opposed to asking for a cheeseburger from the outside world, you might want to ask for some disinfectant. And to all of us at home and in the office and, and whatnot, we might want to spray our remotes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Wendy's Medical Minute. Yeah. Now let's continue with Advice Hour and go to line number one. Buck is there. Buck is 47 and he wants to know why can't he meet any intelligent women without them looking at and then it cuts off on the computer. At what, Buck? At what? They act like I got three heads. I come off intelligent. I'm dressed well. I don't fool around. I let them know exactly what I'm interested in. I like a woman who doesn't smoke. That's the nastiest thing a man could ever want. Uh -huh. So what's up? Why can't I find an Amazon queen like you? <laughs> Too bad you're already taken. Well, uh, you know, uh, um, maybe it's your approach. Maybe you're so direct and so, I mean. No, I'm never disrespectful. Never. Women are queens and they should be treated as such. Oh. Well, maybe you're being too nice, because, you know... You know, that amazes me as well. Uh, well... And if you come off like an idiot, there goes your they, play right out the window as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm in a no-win situation. I don't know, Buck. So you're 47 years old. You've never been married? Oh, no, no, no. I was in a long-term relationship. I'm single nine months now. Okay. Uh, how long were you in that relationship? 25 years. Oh, wow. Did, you, did it produce any children? Uh, two girls. Wonderful. Well adjusted. Mm -hmm. Just happened to be that their mother went a little bit mental. Well, it took you twenty five years to figure that out. Yeah, tell me about it. I stuck it out for them. What? But you've only been ap apart from her for nine months, Buck. So give it a moment. You know what I mean? No, there's no getting back. There's no getting back ever. It, mm. it was it was that bad a break. Mm. No, I'm not talking about getting back together with her. I'm talking about getting together with the next woman. Uh, it's a lonely lifestyle, though. That's the hard part. Well, Buck. <laughs> what can I say? Why don't you hook a brother up? Well, you're probably feeling the pressure of the holiday season. Oh, that too as well. It's very tough. Yeah. And then Valentine's Day. Haven't had one of those in about five years. Uh, wow. Wha well, wait a minute now. You've only been separated from your lovely for nine months. So what Exactly. It, it got so bad. Stop giving Valentine's to each other. Wow. Yeah, it was really, like I said, it was a bad break. Well, you know what? Look, look Buck, take some time for yourself. At this point, you know, you're in the catbird seat. Do you make a decent salary? Yes, I do. You sound like a well-educated man. Yes, I am. I have two jobs. I cater on the side as well. Oh. So, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, Buck, you know, like, like Mariah Carey said back in the day, love takes time. <laughs> However the rest goes. I guess it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it does. Well, thank you, Buck, for calling. I wish you well. <laughs> thank you, my love. You have a wonderful holiday season. Oh, you too. Bye-bye, Buck. Bye-bye. Now, I don't have anything reading on the computer. Is there anybody on hold? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's Wendy. How you doing, Wendy? How you doing? 
um, just recently, I just went to I went back home to Virginia because you know I had to deal with a family um problem, mm -hmm. and I was I mean you know I just I met this girl you know for a couple minutes, mm -hmm. and we I mean I met her <laughs> since I've been because I've been here up here for eleven months. Okay, and she obviously she gave me something. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, what are the symptoms? What are you going through? You're burning. I'm going yet? through. You know, it, I fr at the first, the symptoms was it was real itchy. Okay. And then after after that, um, was it pussy? Yeah. Oh so pussy. crap! Oh, you got it. Ah. No, I don't know what it is, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah. No, turn your radio down because you're listening to that and to me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and after it was pussy. You know, I called her up and was like, I tried to confront her because she's way out in Brooklyn. Yeah. And if, if I'm sure if it wasn't for the strike, this girl would catch it, man. Because, I mean, I'm so faithful. You know, I got a good paying job. Uh, well. You know, whatever she had, I'd give it to her. You know, gave her my world. You know, because I'm from the South. You know, that's what we do. Wow. You know, and, you know, then she, after that, she just. Hello? And then I, after that, you know, I, I tried calling her and she won't return my calls. Yeah. And just, I mean, I'm she, she probably had something before you and didn't notify you. And then she gave you something. Now, how long did you say you were with her? I was, I was 11 months since I've been up here. Yeah, she might have had something. She might have been, you know, burning before she met you. It might not be that she's unfaithful. It might have been that, she, you know, she caught a bad one back in her day and just, you know, never told you about you it. I think, because, I mean, my, my friends have it. It happened to some of my friends yeah, back home. Yeah. But the girls, they be cool as all day, but... Is it really worth being with somebody who really put, them, put themselves like that in a situation? Well, here's the thing. Uh, you know, humans need human-human hu contact. Yeah. So, you know, y y you're going to yearn to be with somebody. I understand how you feel now. Yeah. And, you know, God, I don't have an answer for you. It's like the luck of the draw out here. You mm. know, even when you use condoms, you could be, you know, down there in the area giving a professional and catch something anyway. Yeah. So, you know, condoms don't protect from everything. And it's just, it's just, you know what? Sex with the lights on to me is the best because <laughs> you can see everything. Yeah. And, f and particularly like a, from a man's perspective, if you're with a woman who, um, you know, gets everything removed or a Brazilian or a piece of pie or something, yeah. then you can really see all the bumples still. You can see everything. Mm. You know, it, was she a clean shaven woman? Yeah. Wow. Did you ever have sex with the lights on and take a look at everything? No. I was kind of jumping the gun before the bullets started. Yeah, no, 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 dude. No, <laughs> no, no. No, dude, you can't do that. You you can't do that. Uh, yeah. Take it from me. Your word up. This is Woody. You got to look at the cat trap. <laughs> you got to look at it. Man, yo. You know I play both sides of the fence. How you doing? And that's not a secret. But when dealing with women, yeah, you got to look at everything. All right. Yeah. So, so what you going to do? Have you been to the doctor? Yeah. What did the doctor the, say? They gave me um penicillin? Yeah. They said it would go away in a couple of days though. Okay. The, the the sensations off this crazy. Oh. <laughs> I had that yo yo yo. <sighs> I had that about eight months ago. It's gone. It's fine. Oh, all right. But the itching was crazy. Yeah. So what you scratching all day? <laughs> mm. Child, I mean, Negro, please. Take care of yourself. Leave her alone. And from now on, sex with the lights on. Yeah. And before you dive into anything... Look hard. All right. I appreciate it, Wendy. Take you, Woody. Yeah, peace and blessing day. All right. All right. Wow. Poor dude. Thanks, Woody. Okay, let's go to line number six. Annan is there. Annan, is that how you say your name? Annan? No. no, this isn't Annan. What's your name? Um, I prefer to remain nameless, if that's okay with you, it's Wendy. A, it's okay. Are you um, a 30-year-old woman whose father's yes. been having an affair? Yes. Okay, talk to us. Um, probably in about 2002, mm -hmm. um, there were some rumors, my father and I work at the same place, there were oh. some rumors flying around that my father was being a little too flirtatious 
with a coworker, um, you know, that gets back to people. And I confronted him both at the time. I asked my dad. He looked in my face. He said, no, you're crazy. I love you. I love your mother. I love your sister. And they're still um, married, your, your mom and your dad? Yes. Oh, God. For uh, 27 years. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, I went into the woman's and I told her basically I would F her up if I ever found out that she would go near my father or anything like that. Well, today I go into his office. And, um, you know, him and I working at the same place. I was trying to load something up on his computer, and I see, like, a weird labeled folder. Okay. And I decide to, you know, put my nose where it doesn't belong. I know what happens when you do that. Okay. And I came across this trail of emails. Okay. And there were some things said that, you know, people just don't say to one another if you're just, quote, unquote, friends, like I was told that they both told me they were way back when. So and these emails were from August. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my suspicions back in 2002, now I'm seeing some funky emails talking about buying me this, buying me that. What? Stunning, blah, blah, blah. So wow. now my, the advice I'm looking to you, I, I confronted them both today again. Uh -huh. And basically I was like, you know, how could you lie to me? You were the only man I ever trusted in life. Oh, God. And now. Oh, God. Go ahead. Hello? Up here? Yes. Hello? Now it's like that bubble is burst. Mm -hmm. The whole concept of, like, family. Yes. That's down the drain, so I apologize. It's okay. I confronted her, and I was like, are you screwing my father? You shouldn't have even wasted your time. You know what it is. I know, yeah. but it, it's like you need you need that truth in front of you yes. hard. Uh -huh. So uh, they both <laughs> denied it, and uh, I walked out of their office. Mm-hmm. And uh, my question to you is, I told my father I want nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. And I won't be coming over for Christmas because yeah. I can't fake the funk and sit at the, the family table yes. and put on a facade. So right. I, ha I recently had a son, and I don't think it's fair. You know, like, I'm trying to put my anger aside. Yes. But at the same time, that's hard to swallow. Yes. So do I participate in Christmas yes. with a new baby? Yes. But how do you, how do you suck it up? This is what you do. Break you go to their house with some visine and some pressed powder to cover the redness of your nose and, and some tissues. And you don't let your mother see this. And you go to the house for your son's sake. Your father already knows what it is. And you want to know something? How, do you think your mother knows? I mean, you, you know, based on your mother's behavior, do you think that she knows that the marriage has been over for a minute? I think, I I think in the past when she was going through some problems, yeah. she suspected something. But it's, I thought that they worked through that. Yeah, you know, and it just sucks because a, a girl, a daughter, is always supposed to trust her father. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, well, your father's only human. Uh, you know, he's he's a rat bastard, but he's a human. And um, your question is, should you participate in Christmas? Yes. And the answer is yes. Okay, and do you now I always threaten to tell, like, I feel like I owe, I, I guess I was take on this role, like, trying to protect my mom. Yes. Because I don't think that no woman deserves this. Yes. You know, women need to leave married men alone, point blank. I yes. understand men are old enough and yep. responsible for their own actions, mm -hmm. but it's like out of a woman respecting. So do I, I feel like I have to hint something towards my mom. Do I... I, I don't know where to go from here. You can't just forget what you found out. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, you can't just compartmentalize it and put it away up in that top shelf in the you, attic. You know what? And, and you know, I always stay at it, say stay out of grown people's business yes, with, I, with, I, the, yes. with the exception of parents. If my father was having an affair, I would wait and I would let the holidays go by, bring the baby by. And somewhere in the middle of January, I would invite my mother over to my apartment for the weekend and I would tell her all about it. I would tell my mother. I wouldn't hint. I would be direct because that's my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's my number one girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would tell my mother. And But wait until Christmas and New Year's Eve dies down. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay, uh, Merry Christmas. You too. Rat bastard men. I know all of you all aren't bad, but damn it. Keep it here, everybody. Advice Hour continues. I got the results of the people poll question regarding do you give your coworkers gifts? Do you all exchange gifts? Got the results coming up. 
windy, man. This is Twan Braxton, and I'll see you at this year's Dons and Divas Extravaganza. The Wendy Williams Experience. With gas prices the way they are, I don't know how anyone can afford to buy gifts for the holidays. Uh, sorry, little man, I would have gotten you that new video game, but I spent most of your college funds filling up my tank to get here. And it's even worse if you're rolling in a big old SUV, guzzling gas like eggnog. By the time you get to your family, all you can afford to give them is one of those pine tree air fresheners from the station that just ripped you off. Why not stuff your stocking with a bunch of extra dollars and take Greyhound? They take the stress out of holiday travel. Greyhound is the smart way to travel this holiday season. Buy a ticket in advance or wait till the last minute and go wherever, whenever. It's the quick, comfortable, convenient, and low-priced way to get home for the holidays. I give gas stations so much money, they should buy me a gift. Can of oil. Where's she wash washing fluid? Visit Greyhound.com for up-to-the-minute schedules, routes, and prices. Squeegee. Go more. Go Greyhound. Band Bell. 107.5 WBLS. Home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Listen to Mark Jordan middays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for a chance to win $100 in the Kodak Picture Maker Kiosk Trivia Question of the Day. And if you answer correctly, you qualify for a WBLS Kodak Family Vacation Getaway. Log on to WBLS.com. Sponsored by Kodak Picture Maker. The fastest, easiest, most intuitive way to get real Kodak pictures from your digital camera. And turn this holiday season into photos that will last a lifetime. BLS. 107.5 WBLS reminds you to improve your reading, writing, and math skills by watching TV 411. Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. BLS. This calendar is sponsored by the GED Connection. Get the extra help you need. Watch the GED Connection on Channel 13, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. For more information, log on to WBLS.com. Hey, 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 everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. Everybody, BLS wants to send this on to you. Because you've made your list and you've checked it twice. We want you to listen to WBLS because we, wa- we want to grant your holiday wishes and bring the spirit of the holidays to you courtesy of American Express gift checks. They're good all over the place. And uh, Texas Instruments DLP is part of this also. So be sure that your next HG, excuse me, HD TV has DLP picture technology from Texas Instruments. Happy holidays. <coughs> Shout out to Don, Donna. Donna says, Wendy, I have a question about the Dons and Divas party. Does it matter what color hat a man wear, wears? Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Just as long as black is the predominant color um, on his torso. Like a black you know, suit or whatever it is that you're going to wear and a, a red shirt, fine, is, uh, you know, underneath. Red shoes and a red hat, fine. But, you know, black is that color and and um, there won't be any exceptions. Like, blue can't be that color. And, um, no, Donna, it doesn't matter what color shoes that you wear. Um, shout out to everybody in Long Island. Don't forget, Vibe Hair Salon on 98 North Franklin's got your tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. And shout out to this person. You didn't leave a telephone number or I would call you back, but you simply signed your fax from don't just tell everybody else's business. If you, there's something that you want to talk to me about, and this goes for you or anybody else, if you leave your telephone number and it's maybe something, you know, you want to talk about thyroid disease or, you know, you want an extra phone call or something like that, um, I will uh, certainly, you know, do my best to call you behind the scenes. It might not be during the the show hours, but it might be after the show. I sometimes hang out in the office and like that. So, you know, I will give you a call. So, thank you. Um, Don't tell everybody else's business. Thank you very much. (coughs) Oh, boy. We're about a half hour away from announcing the next Don for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. It's going to be big. Save that until... Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. But it's still advice hour, so I'm taking your telephone calls. In the meantime, I have a a fax here. Dear Wendy, I was talking to my four-year-old over the weekend, and she told me that the kids in her class were laughing at her, and I asked why they were laughing, and she said, because I spilled my juice, and I asked her, were you 
at lunch at the time? She said no. They were having snack in the class, and I and we were all having the snack, and I spilled my juice, and the kids were laughing, and she said it wasn't funny. She said her teacher thumped her in the side of her head and said, it is funny. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Damn. And she told me that she started crying after the teacher thumped her on the side of her head. Wendy, I told my daughter to show me how the teacher thumped her. And my daughter showed me with her hand. And I had no idea she even knew what thumping meant. Uh, She couldn't tell me when exactly it happened as far as the day, but it happened. So I will be addressing the situation. But Wendy, I am shocked and very upset. It's one thing for kids to tease at school, but it's another to have a teacher get downright unprofessional and unethical. Her school is out right now for the holidays, so I'm not able to address the situation until they return back to school. Wendy, I just want to know how I can approach the situation without flying off the handle. (coughs) I'm just blown away by the whole situation. I really need some advice. Sign concerned parent. This is what you do. You go into the school. Do you drop your uh, daughter off at school? Because if you do, then you make sure that you get there early enough and you sit on the perch outside the principal's office or at the door where you can see all the teachers and principal, everybody come in because you want to have this conversation one time and one time only. And you want the teacher to understand that you mean business. And the only way a teacher will understand that is if you pull the principal in on the meeting as well. You don't want the meeting with just the teacher. Okay. And, um, and, and I think that, uh, Oh, and make sure to mention lawsuit. Just just mention it. Just throw it in there. Shake them up a bit. And I wish you well. Sorry to hear about what happened. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Dear Wendy, I, have, I haven't been able to smell for years. It's a, Look at everybody coming out of the closet. <laughs> Dear Wendy, I haven't been able to smell for years. It's a terrible thing not having your smell sense. My biggest paranoia is if my home smells. I always ask people who enter my home, does it smell like anything? I have plug-ins galore all over the place. Me too! Me too! <laughs> I'm always plugging in and changing the cartridge and spraying. and. <laughs> Wendy, it is unfortunate, especially when we have children and during their toddler years, I couldn't smell a thing, but when my aunt had her colon... Uh, colon uh, colonoscopy bag I was the only one who was able to change it and clean her up during her time of need because no one else could tolerate the smell I don't think it will ever come back I've learned to live with it but sometimes it gets depressing that's signed Denise P.S. I bought five Dons and Divas extravaganza tickets where's the venue Denise excuse me the Dons and 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 this is for everybody else too the Dons and Divas hotline is wide open if you've got tickets in your hot little hands and there's a telephone number on your tickets you call that telephone number my girl Fridays will be working round the clock nonstop. you ring up the phone two o'clock in the morning they will answer three o'clock six o'clock what we got blow up beds and two couches in the office okay it is it is camp wendy experience at this particular point so you call the telephone number on you all's tickets the line opened uh, as of yesterday where you can call but you know you call that number and you give her your ticket number and she'll tell you where the tickets are and, and, and the girls are working real hard let's go to line number five donna's out in long island she's 45 and um she is she wants to know if it's unreasonable if she uh and a man don't have sex. Donna, could it be? Hello? Donna? Yes? Donna, yes. Now, tell me more about this this man that you're talking about. It's not a particular... Well, first of all, hello, I love you. Thank you, Donna. It's not a particular man. It's just men in general because every time I meet somebody and it's somebody I'd like to, you know, be friendly with, Mm -hmm. it always ends up that way. Well, is it that you're not interested in sex anymore? Be honest, because, uh, you know, it happens. No, I just have no interest. To tell you the truth, I'm going to be 45. Mm-hmm. And uh, even when I was younger, I, you know, I did it because it was expected. Yeah. But, uh, never really appreciated it and just have no interest. Hey, you, you know what? Um, have you talked to anybody about this? Because you'd be surprised how many people are just going through the motions because it's the thing to do because we live in such an over society that it dictates that everything is about sex. You're, you're a very young woman to be going through this. I feel bad for you because um, unfortunately 
people, by and large, love sex. I mean, there are a lot of people who don't care about it, but people love sex. And I, and I, I couldn't... I, you're going to have a difficult time finding somebody to be with unless you give them the okay to go out and have sex with other people, but just, you know, be in love. But I, but I do. I figure I'm the perfect... I'm the perfect... I'm not bad looking. I've got a nice body because I never had kids. Oh. I figured I'm the perfect eye candy... For an older man to wear on his arm when he needs a sophisticated, intelligent woman to bring someplace, yeah. and then he, well, then when he wants sex, he can go run around with the young things, and it always starts out good, but then it always ends up that. But the thing is, is that nobody wants to hear that they have permission to cheat in the very beginning because you're still the exciting candy. You see, you got to go through the motions for a year or two and give them, yeah. give them a chance to rev up and want to cheat, and then say, "Hey, go ahead." You see, Donna, you're playing it wrong. You gotta have the sex in the beginning because if to to meet a guy and you're good looking and you know you don't want sex, not for nothing, it makes you think you're weird, and then they don't want to be involved at all. So I think the answer is yes, and I'm unreasonable. To, yeah. it's unreasonable to expect. Yes. a okay. In a brand new relationship, is it is unreasonable to expect that there is no sex, and it's weird to say to a guy, "Listen, you can go out and have sex with somebody else." You know, let him wear you out a bit, and then you become that old thing that he wants to cheat on. Go ahead, Donna. Just look. Just work it out for hell. There's some men, you know, three months into the relationship, they they're glad to be cheating, but you gotta you gotta have some sex. Just go okay. through, go through the motions. Take care, Donna. Okay. Thank you. All right, bye bye. Hey, listen. Bye -bye. Advice hour continues. Samantha, I see you on line one in Connecticut. Tiffany, I see you on line two. If you gals can hold on for a moment, um, I'll put you on. Advice hour continues. Uh, on the Wendy Williams experience in just a few moments. 107.5 WBLS. Girls, let's talk about hair. You spend hundreds of dollars. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. What's, What's up? up? This is New Edition. This is Jack A. Harry. I'm the Reverend Al Shop. This is Brenda K. Star. It's your boy, Trey Song. What's up, y'all? This is Vivian Green, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams experience. Yo, what's up? This is Anthony Hamilton. What's up, yo? This is Angie Stone. We're boys, boys to men. men. You're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. So all my people in the struggle. You so I want you to remember. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy Williams. Okay, we're reloaded. Let's get into it. Okay, now, shout out to everybody who um, has any interest at all in the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Now, you know, Bobby Brown will 100% definitely be in the building. Mary J. Blige is celebrating her new CD today in stores. And she will definitely be in the building as our diva. But this man I'm about to announce to you has had a fabulous career. He was in Dead Presidents. He was in Four Brothers. He was in Best Man. We know him as Greg Sparks, if you go back that far. He was fabulous in Hustle and Flow. He's Oscar-nominated actor and fabulous all-around brother, Terrence Howard! I loved him in this movie. I saw it in the house. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Let this roll right up to where he's rapping. Let us hear his 16 bars. Uh-huh. Come on. Eyes out of season. Uh -huh. And it's just got a couple. Then on the chain. Uh -huh. Terrence Howard in the building. The Dons and Divas extravaganza. What up, pimp? What up, pimpette? People live in poverty. Uh. Oh my. People. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be the party of the year, boy. An unforgettable experience. New York City. Thursday, December 22nd. We are just about 48 hours away. 
from the party of the year. Pull a pin. Uh-huh. Put your game on and make sure your game is black. Uh, make sure that you get your car service, your hotel room. That non-stop open bar is a killer, boy. Shout out to Martel Cognac. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the Georgie Overselly Wendy Williams Champagne. <laughs> yeah. Special shout out to Apple Bottom. Shout out to Ounce by Ounce. Shout out to Gilliard Clothing. Woo! Shout out to B and Bobby Brown. Shout out to that Mary J. Blige CD in stores today. Get that. Shout out to Face Down Entertainment. Shout out to Question Mark Entertainment. Yeah. And that's how it's going down. Bigger and better than ever. This is Dons and Divas number six. Bobby Brown, Mary J. Blige, Terrence Howard, Ron Artest, Fat Joe Buster Rhyme, my girl Keisha Cole. Shout out to Fat mm -hmm. Lackawanna Blues he was in. Their eyes are watching God. Ray, Big Mama's House, Sunset Park, Who's the Man? Oh, shout out to the Ed Lover. Mm, yeah. Ed, I'll see you in the building. I know my girl Friday's rushed you over some passes. Shout out to you, two star, and your whole squad. Jonesy, Envy, Angie. He was in Glitter with Mariah Carey. Well, you know, the movie didn't do well, but he did. He's Oscar nominated, and he'll be in the building. He'll be cracking bottles all night long. What? Hey. Yep. <laughs> all right, so that's the way it's going down, and I and I must say that, um, ladies and gentlemen, please have your pimp and pimp et game strong on Thursday night. Okay. All right. What's up, everybody? Wendy Williams oh. and Mary J. Hey, Blige. Mary. What more can I say? Well, you could say, how you doing? How, how you doing? We never got a how you doing from Mary. No. We got to get, <laughs> get one from her. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Let's go to the telephones and talk to our friends now. Kim is on line number six, and she wants to talk about Jody Watley. Oh, she disappeared? Well, is Rennell on line, too? Rennell? Hey. Hey, Ren hey Rennell. Girl. Terrence Howard. Girl. What? Terrence Howard. Hmm. Wendy? Yes? I gotta go. <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand. <laughs> Where do you live, Rennell? I live in Queens. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. For Queens, you're going to get in touch with my man, Don Ron. Mm -hmm. He owns Hillside Auto Spa. And it, the telephone number is 718 523-2309. You might need that VIP uh, line. Cause Ron, Absolutely. Ron, Ron's got general admission. Here's the VIP. There's very few tickets left at this point for the entire party. But VIP is even more limited. 917-302-6117. Mm -hmm. You got it? I got it. All I right. will be there. All right, V. See you Thursday. All right. All right. So let's talk about people. Because that's what we do. Um, let me see. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, Wendy, as far as Nick and Jessica are concerned, I hope that she pays him spousal support. The only reason they didn't have a prenuptial agreement is because her career was whack and lackluster when they got married, and his was semi-warm. I'm sure her family talked her out of getting one. Yeah, no, she kept pausing. They actually had one drawn up, and she kept pausing and didn't want to sign it at the encouragement of her father. So now she's in the catbird, or he's in the catbird seat where he can get her money. Hey, who's seen a recent picture of Courtney Love? Courtney Love has gained about 50 pounds. <laughs> I mean, 
And you want to know what Nicole Richie explained it, uh, you know, in talking about when you're like when you're when you're rehabbing off you know, like heroin or whatever. And I don't know that that was her, Courtney Love's drug of choice. All I know is, is that, you know, I, I know people who've been through rehab and there is a certain amount of ballooning up that you do due, due, due to, you know, whatever it is that they give you to detox. So maybe that's Courtney's situation. I don't know. I don't know. Let's talk about Ron Artest. He'll be in the building. So he told the newspapers that he wants to be traded from um, the uh, Pacers. And, you know, I know we've all heard about this and everything. I don't know that the music will be low enough for you to get an actual answer from him at Don's and Divas. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wouldn't even make that attempt. But here's what he said. In case you haven't heard what he actually said, um, or excuse me, what the team president has actually told the Indianapolis uh, reporters who've been collecting the stories. I do think it is time to kind of break apart and see if he can get a new start somewhere else. I think that this is important for us to put our past behind us and stop these distractions. Oh, that's like a diss. But I heard Artessa wants to come to uh, the Knicks. Is is they is goose? You're nodding yes. Is that is that the word? Yeah. He wants to come home. Come on home, baby boy. Queensbridge loves you. We love you here. Why not? Well, our test will be in the building, 48 hours from now, and his wife too. So back off, broads. <laughs> our test is in love. Halle Berry uh, was talking to a London newspaper. And she said that um, she talked about the moment that, you know, because she has type 2 diabetes. And um, as well as that hearing thing at the hands of uh, Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Well, she said that her type 2 diabetes popped up in 1989 when she was filming that TV show, Living Dolls. Was I the only one who was watching that show? I used to watch that show. Lee Remini was on it and everything. All my favorite girls. <laughs> anyway, here's what she said. Here's her quote. I felt, and you know, it's funny because after I read this story prior to the show, I was like, you know, because I'm the health person, I'm, I was testing myself like, do I feel tired a lot? Do I, maybe I need one of these tests. <laughs> anyway, she said, I felt tired, but I couldn't take a breather because I was filming the show. I felt I needed energy, but I didn't even have a minute to pop out and get a chocolate bar. I felt more and more tired. And one day I passed out and I didn't wake up for seven days, which was obviously serious. So after she received her diagnosis from the doctor of type 2 diabetes, he also told her her diet... Um, had to begin and her regular exercise routine had to begin. Here's where she goes on in quotes. She says, they told me I might lose my eyesight. Oh gosh, girl, don't make me a friend in, don't make you a friend in my head on health. Oh, they might, they told me I might lose my eyesight or I could lose a leg. I was scared to death. I thought I was going to die. Well, she began testing her blood sugar levels twice a day and injecting herself with insulin. And she says, uh, well, she doesn't say anything else. Injecting herself. Wow. See, I can't even do that. I'm waiting for my psoriasis. I, I go tomorrow, as a matter of fact, uh, to, for my in injection for my psoriasis. And the doctor told me, you know, I can have all the needles and stuff. They're already, you know, pre-measured out, sent to my house. I can inject myself or my husband just, you know, some fatty tissue in my leg and do it. I'm like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Look, I don't know whether, and shout out to all the DR periods and the whole medical community. You know, I love you like cooked food. I got so much respect for you. But I've always heard, and I don't know whether this is a myth or not, if there's a bubble in a needle and that bubble makes its way to your heart, you die. So I'm not trying to, you know. Have my, uh-uh, 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 I'm going to the doctor. Every time I go to the doctor, it was once every two weeks for my injection. <clears throat> then they were telling me, and, and Mrs. Hunter, this is how you dispose of the needles. You take them over to the, what? This is all too, uh-uh, uh, no, no. If I didn't inject myself with needles back then, you know what I'm saying? Looking for a better high. And I damn sure am not injecting my needles, myself with needles now. Do we have a moment to talk about Sanaa Latham? No. no. Damn you. <laughs> Got a minute 45. All right. Well, damn. Shout out to everybody in Philly. What's good, Philly? I'm going to be in Atlantic City on January 15th. 
hosting a show with Guy. Yes, the original members of En Vogue, Keith Sweat, and Belle Biv DeVoe. I wonder if Bobby will jump on stage. Because he wasn't a member, but that's still his family. And Bobby sells tickets. I wonder if he'll jump on stage. Well, we'll find out at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City on January 15th. I'll be there. And then I'll file my report. Terrence Howard's in the building, ladies and gentlemen, for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Say word. Wow. All right. <laughs> By the way, the results of the people poll question. Uh, do you and your coworkers exchange Christmas gifts? 45% of you all said yes. 55% of you said no. Today's people poll question is, will you be spending the holidays with your family, like your blood family, not, you know, your group of friends who are so close? And I have those. I know what you mean, but that's not I'm talking about family, bloodline family. So you can answer yes or no. And you can go to my website, the Wendy Williams Experience dot com. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll take this break and we'll be back with more shenanigans. Keep it here. Wendy, man. This is Takara from America's Next Top Model, Season 3. And I'll see you at this year's Dons and Divas Extravaganza. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Today's R&B and Classic Soul. <laughs> yeah. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. Vaughn Harper in the Quiet Storm comes up at 7 o'clock. So, everybody, um, this is what we want you to do here at BLS. You see... We've got these family four packs of passes for the color of Generations Night for a color purple and a pre-show reception hosted by me at B. Smith's. It's a whole Broadway theater night. The reception at B. Smith's and then we all go to the play and you'll have a family four pack. Now, <coughs> this particular night that I'm speaking of is January 12th. If you would love to join us, what you do is tell us about your family relationships. Not every nook and cranny. You understand what we're saying. And I'm not looking for, we're not looking for woe is me stories. You know, my, my mother lost her leg. My father lost his life. And this is why I need the tickets. Uh-uh. You know, this is your chance to tell however you want about your family relationships. My, you know, I've been with my man for 12 years, you know, or whatever, whatever, whatever. I just got out of school. My parents struggled to send me. This would be a great way to thank them, so on and so forth. We want to, to hear. Make sure you include your email address and your telephone number and submit your letter to WBLS.com. This is your chance to pick up your family four-pack of tickets for the Color of Generations Night. January 12th. The whole night is hosted by me. I'll meet you over at B. Smith's. We'll have our food and our drinks. And then we'll go over to the theater together. And it's going to be wonderful. January 12th. So go to our website and submit your letters. WBLS.com. All right? And thank you very much in advance. Don't forget, everybody, right before the Wendy Williams experience, it's always... Mark Jordan with the Midday Show right after the Steve Harvey Morning Show from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here at WBLS 107.5. Special shout out to JD and all my friends at ISO Life Shearlings. I got a nice shearling from them last year. Ashanti, I've seen wear their stuff. As a matter of fact, the whole murdering clique, free from one, well, formerly of 106 and Park and whatnot, they make some really nice one of a kind stuff. If you'd love to check out, um, you know what they have. ISO Life is their 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 things are exquisite, one of a kind. Go to isolifeny.com. It's i s o l i f e n y dot com. And um, also shout out to my girl Zariah. At Salon Distinctive in Orange, New Jersey. They're on Main Street. They've got passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Yeah. Yeah. If you want them, you can always get in touch with the people at Salon Distinctive. All right. So um, let's go to telephone. Now, line number four, um, I hit the computer screen by accident. And um, you know what? How about line number seven? This is from a 25-year-old person afraid of giving away business cards. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Wendy. Why are you scared to give away business cards? I don't know. I'm just so, I don't know. I walk past people, and I'm just so scary. Okay, turn your radio all the way down. Let's talk. 
Hello. Yes. Okay, what do you do for a living? Um, I do hair. I got my license. I went to school at Hair Design Institute, Bay Ridge, in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I graduated June 1st. I worked in the salon. Mm-hmm. And I was renting my booth, and mm-hmm. then I left. I was trying to get on my flyers, but for some reason, I'm just scared of people. I don't know. Well, I don't have anything to say to you except for, look, this is a do or die situation because you're in a do or die business. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the, the amount of revenue that you bring in at your booth is based on your ability to sell it yourself. Mm-hmm. So you need to get a backbone or fake it until you believe it yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're all frightened at some point in our lives. Frightened of public speaking, frightened of elevators, frightened to drive after you've had a car accident, but you have nobody else to get you to work. You're frightened to get on a horse once you've fallen off. There is no, there is no clear-cut answer to being frightened of anything except if your life depends on it, and yours does because it's your livelihood, your link to, to eating. Mm-hmm. Your life depends on you making contact with people. So if, if, you were, if you've had this fear all along, then you chose the wrong business. I know, that's how I feel. Yeah, okay. Well, then you might want to choose another business, something that keeps you behind, you know, a glass booth filing papers or something where you don't have to deal with people. For real. I mean, you can laugh, but you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, you're in a people business because after you get all the, your, your customers, how do you think you keep them? You don't just keep them with the fly hairstyles. You keep them with soothing conversation. Yeah. And a really great demeanor. Okay, so you're in the wrong business, so it's time for you to decide what else do you want to do with the rest of your life. You're 25. Do you have children? Yeah. How many children? One. Okay, how old? Nine. She. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you don't, you know what? There's no room in your life to be frightened of anything. I mean, you can be fr- frightened on the inside, but there's no room to, uh, to display you being frightened. Okay. You got to be brave. Put that where Are you with the baby's there. father? No. Okay. So when you need uh, something at 11 o'clock at night, are you frightened to go out because of the criminals in the street? Um, I am. I, 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 no, I, I will answer you. I am. But you want to know what? I will grab my car keys, grab my gun, I mean my mace, uh-huh. and, and go on over to the food town and look at anybody like, what? That's so true. And on the inside... I'm frightened as a five-year-old girl because I don't believe that the streets are safe after dark for women and children. Mm-hmm. But you got to do what you got to do to make it in the world. And only the strong or the perceived strong survive. So you know, get down or lay down. And right now you're laying down. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It's painful for me to talk to people like that. Because you know what I'm saying? Because like I like like did anybody tell you like what to do to get over fright of something? Like I I I didn't have that kind of instruction. Like my parents are wonderful and all like that, but I didn't have that kind of instruction. My big sister's great. I just never even thought of going to anybody and saying like I'm I'm frightened of some of the most basic things in life. Like you know to talk to to people. You know. I don't know, cause it's you gotta you gotta survive. I don't go to the grocery store after dark, but if we need something, I'm out. And I'm giving you the screw face, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but inside, I'm like a frightened mm-hmm. child. You know, you can hear my knees clanking together. You know, my God, I don't like to be out like, mm, after dark. <laughs> what? That's when the killers come out. Exactly. But I fake it. Like, I'll kill you before you kill me. What? I will kill you. <laughs> you Knowing damn well I'm holding my gun like Barney Fife. <laughs> Hands shaking. <laughs> I mean, what? What? Hell yeah. Is he in the building? No. Oh. Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll take his telephone call. What the hell? That's the man. Anyway, um, all right, you know what? We need to continue with the break. And uh, keep in mind, all things relating to BLS 
um, or most things relating to BLS, you can find out about on our fabulous website. Shout out to our web department. You guys do a great job. WBLS.com. It's WBLS.com for all of your BLS uh, questions. And um, it's Vaughn Harper coming up at 7 o'clock with The Quiet Storm. I'm Wendy Williams, and I'm here until 7, right here on 107.5 WBLS. What's up? This is CeCe Peniston. How you doing? Yo, what's up? This is Morris Chestnut. Hey, this is Kimberly Elise. What up? It's your boy, the infamous Mad Links, holding it down for Rap City. You're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. All right, so Jenna Bush, an offender or not? I mean, based on the average Hollywood celebrity 24-year-old scandal sheets, I would say more likely yes than no. I mean, the Bush twins, wow. <laughs> At least they were. Hey. Well, China, this is all I'm saying. So the president's little Jenna is uh, caught up in a bit of a cocaine scandal. It's being investigated by the Secret Service. Apparently, Jenna... Um, Jenna's problem began in New York City when she was partying at this bar on the Lower East Side. You might have heard about this. It's called The Happy Ending. And according to a man who is notorious there for selling cocaine. They flirted wildly all night long. Jenna ended up losing her wallet, and this man has been walking around showing Jenna's ID to everybody as evidence that, you know, you know they knew each other and so on and so forth. Now, you can also believe that he can make a lie out of an ID, that she could have been there. She didn't know that it was a notorious hangout for co I mean, what does she know? She's a pampered princess from the White House. On the other hand... 
You could also say, hmm, she ain't stu- she knew exactly where she was and she knew exactly who she was talking to. I just wanted to share that with you. So, <coughs> apparently, and I saw this in the newspaper the other day regarding um, Sanaa Latham. No, not in the baby and, and him. <laughs> Damn her. Ain't no good gonna come to you and two Paulette says so. But have you heard? You know, she was ranting about Essence Magazine at two separate parties in Los Angeles. She was overheard going off on Essence. <laughs> and she's upset with um, a writer friend of mine, Janine Amber. Hey, Janine! In the March of 2006 issue of Essence Magazine, the cover story is about Sanaa Latham. And my girl, Janine Amber, went right in. That's my girl with the fire, never scared to ask the questions. Her interview was reportedly peppered with questions about the love child, the rumor, her uh, rumored affair with Denzel Washington and the rumored love child that they spawned and the rumor that she and that baby and that cheating man are the reason that poor Paulette is left feeling, well, less than happy for this happy holiday season. Janine, I need to talk to you. Shout out to Elisa Payne in the office. Elisa, we need the Essence Magazine exclusive. I need to talk to Janine. I want to know body language. I want to know everything. Here's the source. Talking. She said she was extremely disappointed by Essence. She would expect that behavior from a tabloid or the Wendy Williams experience, but not a magazine that is supposedly to celebrate black women. Yeah, we celebrate all sides of black women. And let's face facts. We conquer the world, but we're also hoes and harlots. Some of us. And home wreckers. Some of us. Here's what the source goes on to say. She's totally happy. Oh, excuse me. Her camp is denying that she ever said these things. Her camp is saying, no, she's totally happy with the magazine and has no issue with them or uh, whatsoever. In the interview, the rumors did come up, but they knew very well that she wasn't pregnant. And the question came up in the context of how do such rumors affect her life? And a rep says, we're thrilled to have Sanaa Latham grace the March cover and in her first solo cover for Essence magazine. We've had a wonderful experience with her and her team. So she's got a new romantic comedy coming out in February. It's called Something New. So um, that's what I have on Sonal Latham for today. Because <laughs> tomorrow, it could be a whole nother story. As soon as that DNA test is taken. Miss Wendy, do you want Jody Breeze from Boys in the Hood on the show? Wait, Jody, I'm getting it mixed up with with um, Tyrese's character on Baby Boy. Boys in the Hood, we're talking about the group. Yes. Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll be back there in the pink room in a moment. Baby Boy! This is Tyrese's role. Jody. Tyrese did do a good job in that in that movie, um, The Four Brothers. I saw that in Berlin on the flight back, as a matter of fact. I like that movie. Mark Wahlberg is bad white. Boy, he's cracking. He's he's cracking he's cracking fast. Like, you know, you know what I mean? He's he's very wrinkly. I mean, for you know, a man who could afford the best moisturizer. Okay, let's talk about Jermaine Dupre. So he's teamed up with Cartier to create a series of limited edition eyewear stuff to benefit the Americans, um, excuse me, to benefit um, uh, the hurricane relief effort. So each pair of glasses will include Jermaine Dupri's signature and the Cartier signature C logo. And here's what he says. 
I've been a longtime supporter of Cartier, and they know this. So I was in the store one day and getting some something fixed, and I thought, how about I create an eyewear with them? So I asked the manager, and I was thinking that they were going to say, hell no, but they took a shot, and they thought it was a cool idea. That's great. So a percentage of the proceeds, everybody, is going to be donated to the Atlanta Community Food Bank and the City of Refugee Organization. They're both local liaisons for the hurricane relief in Louisiana. And a special shout out to everybody in Louisiana. Um, We haven't forgotten about you um, one bit. You know, this holiday season, this is what it's really all about. It's about being grateful for what you do have and, and remembering what you don't have sometimes isn't so bad like you know I can't even think of a story regarding that but you know be grateful for your health be grateful for your family be grateful that you weren't in the hurricane remember the people who were in the hurricane and remember the basic principle of the human spirit is that you know you know it's people helping people you know so happy holidays everybody Forget all this therapy stuff. Let's talk about people. All right, we will. Keep it here. R. Kelly's on the table next. Ow. Wendy, man. It's the king. You call your boy Lil John. Hey, it's that boy Big Sam. And we will see you at this year's Dons and Divas Extravagant. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Williams. I gotta tell you something. I have to wish a happy holiday to Ludacris. I hear people say that Ludacris is corny. I gotta tell you something. He is sexy and cool to me all day long. Yeah, baby. I thank you, Ludacris. I just, you know, I just there there's just something about him, and he's been on the show before. He's been on the show a couple of times, as a matter of fact. But there is something about him. And you know what? Maybe it's his voice. You know, on and off. I I don't know. I just, I find him uh, very sexy. So happy holidays, Ludacris. I didn't realize that they showed the Macy Gray punk already. See, I don't watch that show. I don't watch it. I didn't know. I just, I just hate the premise of the show. And I just, you know, well, what the hell? That's from three hours ago. If you just turned on the show, don't, don't worry about it. I'm crazy. Dear Wendy, if you can't smell, how do you know your cat trap is fresh? Because I just lost my sense of smell two years ago. So I remember what I did then to attract the dogs. (laughs) So I know I just need to keep doing that. I do have to admit, though, I do overly um, bidet. Like at our house, we have a bidet. I never use the toilet unless I have to do a number two. I'm always, you know, bidet-in and, you know, yeah, 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 always, always, mm-hmm. Probably too much. Then I get to my gynecologist, I get her, push her nose right up in it. Look, how, how is everything? Because she knows, you know, she's known since day one. Because my gynecologist and my dentist were the first two people I consulted, even before ear, nose, and throat special. Like, how does everything smell? How, how am I doing? <laughs> Wendy, why are your why are your appointments so intense? Okay, I'll tell you my secret because I can't smell myself. How's my breath smell? <sighs> Doctor Yvette, how does my cat trap smell? No, put your nose in it. Get, uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't get any complaints. Everything's good. Thanks. I see in the newspaper today that Paige Kennedy, the dummy from the basement on Desperate Housewives, now has a song out called "Hold On." <laughs> Well, now hold on now. And shout out to Elisa Payne in the booking office in the pink room. Elisa, we need to get a copy of this song. Taryn, we need a copy of the song. It's called Hold On. Some of what he says, my departure was part of a particular incident that I'm not going to mention. What else could I say than they wanted to recast me after they unmasked me? This is the rap. And actually, it wouldn't have been as bad if the tabloids wouldn't have spread it, spread the bull. A shotgun is heard, and a little girl yells out, Daddy, Daddy. So there's some undertones of suicide in there afterwards. Okay, whatever. But he's circulating this track to radio stations and to club DJs. 
We need a copy of that. Just get, get a good chuckle. We need a, we need a copy. It's called Hold On by Paige Kennedy. Also, I see in the newspaper. Uh, first of all, I didn't see the Billboard Music Awards last night, and apparently neither did you. I haven't gotten any facts to that effect. Teresa in Yonkers says that Mary J. Blige's CD is hot to death, and she sold out within minutes at Best Buy in Maryland. Mm, she's even rapping on the CD. I love, love, love it. Yeah, you know what? We've had the CD in the pink room for about three weeks. Mary J. Blige's new CD, Breakthrough, is, is all right. It's all right. I'll see what Dons and Divas marry. So, I was talking about the Billboard Music Awards because Jordan Knight from New Kids on the Block apparently reserved 20 rooms on his credit card, but his credit card was denied. So, when they got to the hotel, none of his squad had rooms. I mean, they eventually got hooked up, but, you know... Paul Wall, baby. A Paul Wall. <laughs> Paul Wall <clears throat> is apparently being looked at by prosecutors in two counties. Well, they're, invest- they're investigating the cancellation of two Paul Wall concerts um, featuring, of course, Paul Wall, Mike Jones, and then Chamillionaire. And the concerts were supposed to be one of, excuse me, one of the concerts Two counties they're investigating. It's one concert, I'm sorry, in Alabama. The concert was supposed to be on December 9th. And it's according to attorneys, um, they were contacted by local businesses who were told, the, the attorneys were told that the concert was oversold by $4,000 worth of tickets. So the cops are saying that the show was promoted and advertised on an Alabama radio station and was booked by a promotional company called Top Dog Entertainment. And the crowd showed up at the Farm Center. (laughs) The Farm Center. (laughs) Only to be greeted with a sign that stated that the concert was canceled with no reason given. The fans of Paul Wall, Mike Jones, and Chamillionaire, Jones and Chamillionaire, went to the local businesses... I guess wherever they bought their concert tickets and demanded refunds. So one local retailer says that he shelled out over $1,500 in refunds and customers were angry as hell. Now, according to the farm center manager, the promoters never paid the remaining deposit to secure the building or return telephone calls requiring, or excuse me, inquiring about the uh, balance. So not only... I'm surmising here. Not only did they not pay for the concert to actually go, but they oversold the concert by like 4,000 tickets. $4,000 worth of tickets. So they made off like fat rats and and now fraud, of course. Yes, exactly. Oh, by the way, a big shout out to Grandmaster Flash, who just called up behind the scenes during the commercial breaks to say he just got back in the country and he will be at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Ow. 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 R. Kelly appeared in court on Friday Ow. on yet another attempt to get those pornography charges against him dismissed. The hearing is scheduled for February 10th. So, you know. Mm-hmm. I understand Puffy and the game were locked in a recording studio together in Los Ow. Angeles. They are collaborating on a project, and the early buzz is indicating that the project is going to be hot to death. Mm-hmm. Kanye West, friend to the show. He's got his new record label. Good Records. G-O-O-D. I wonder what good stands for. Knowing Kanye, it's probably something dealing with I'm all that, period, end of statement. There is nobody better. You know, you know his arrogance. We love it. And um, Mary is celebrating today, of course, the release of her new CD, Breakthrough. But she's also studying very hard for her debut in the untitled movie about Nina Simone's life. (coughs) I'll put a spell on you. Uh. (laughs) Hey, Kendu. Mm -hmm. Here's what Mary says about it. My husband has helped me so much. We're in this together. We love each other. It was him who gave me the confidence. I think she meant he, but she didn't graduate from high school. But but you know what? 
You know what? I, I, you know what? I wonder what Mary, uh, is she still working on that? You know, yes or no? At this point, does it really matter? Well, she says, hey, listen, there are plenty of people making cake after cake after cake who also lead very moral lives and know how to raise their children fine. And or, you, know, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying to the kids who are out there drop out of school because Mary is one of those one in a million circumstances. But where is their time for school at this point? The woman is doing the damn thing. So she says, it was, it was my husband who gave me the confidence to believe in myself. He gave me the love and attention that I had never had before. It was healthy for me. And he put me back together again. That's wonderful. I'll see you and Ken do at the party on Thursday, Mary. Where's Pharrell? I saw the Beyonce Pink Panther video. And did you see her wearing her high heel bapes? Well, apparently, it's Pharrell's clothing line that made those for her. She said that she's taking you back in the day when she used to wear cornrows and stuff like that in that video. <laughs> that, that was her intention. Oh, look at this. This just in from the Panache Report. We leaked a story to our girl Wendy Williams the other week. If you missed her broadcast, this is a recap. A white actress who appeared on one of the biggest shows in syndication, it was Baywatch, everybody, had a birthday party. At the birthday party, an aspiring actress whose name is being withheld, I still don't know that name, you all, was in attendance. Her ride was called away on an emergency, and a few party guests encouraged her to accept a ride with a foreign man in attendance of the party. She reluctantly did, but they swore to her that he's a funny guy and a cool guy so she got in the limo and was surprised to find additional men in the back seat before she could get out the limo sped off the next few hours were a nightmare experience she was gang raped and beaten beyond recognition and afterwards she was dumped on a deserted highway a near a passerby rushed her to the emergency room Guests who attended the party are stonewalling the police, claiming that they don't know who the man's name. The limo driver has yet to be located, and the victim will require reconstructive surgery. Her acting career is over. We will keep you up to date with any information that surfaces in this case. That's from the Panache Report. Man, they give the best blind items. And being that it's an upcoming actress, no, we don't know who she is. But... It's just the idea, you know, like, watch yourself. Now, here's another blind item from the Panache Report. Hey, Myra Panache. She says, despite the fact this legendary rocker surrounds himself with black background singers, collaborates with black artists. Oh, who is this? Help me as I read this. Collaborates with black artists and credits blacks with being his musical influence. He reportedly has an intense hatred for African-American women. When he surrounds, when he's around his white friends, he often refers to blacks in stereotypical terms. <clears throat> when he found out a white female, not a girlfriend, was dating a black celebrity, he left the phone message calling her a disgust, and that was the nicest part of the message. When she played the entire message for friends, they asked, "Does he belong to the hate to a hate group?" He also threatened to ruin her career unless she stopped seeing the black celebrity. He's so powerful, she relented. Now, Q is too old. Mm -hmm. And we already know his, his love of, you know, white women. Mm -hmm. He's a legendary on them because... Um, Dennis wants, Dennis is, oh, we only have a minute? Damn. Dennis wants to talk about Kanye West label. Maria in Newark wants to say hello. And Carrie wants to say, hey, and I love you too, Carrie. Thank you very much. All right, Dennis, Maria, and Carrie, thank you for, very much for calling. But we're about to go into, oh, by the way, shout out to Kalisa and Nas. I'll see you all at Dons and Divas. Mm. Mom, milkshake. All right, um, keep it where you got it, everybody.
It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Wendy, man. What up, y'all? This your boy, Young Lloyd. I'm here to let y'all know that you do not want to miss this year's Dines and Divas extravaganza. The Wendy Williams Experience. Back. And who cares? It's the movie version of Remington Steel. Pierce Brosnan is going to be in it. He's 53. He still looks great. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Okay, let's move on. BLS, right now, we're looking for caller number... 10 on the telephones. We can count them down and, t- and take somebody on the telephone live to pick up the family four pack of tickets to join me on January 12th for the Color of Generations Night at the Color Purple. Let's say caller number one. You call it number two. You call it number three. Number four. And you'll also join me for a pre show reception at B. Smith's. You're calling number five. You're calling number six. You're calling number seven. You're calling number eight. Hi, BLS. You're calling number nine. Hello, hello. Happy holidays. You're calling number 10. Really? Yes, congratulations. Oh, I, my God. I know you want to see the color purple. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, and, and now are you 21? Uh, yes, I'm 22. Maybe we can have a glass of white wine <laughs> as it'll be a very sophisticated evening on Broadway. Hey, what's your name? Hi, my name is Yvette. Hey, Yvette. Okay, it's Wendy here. On January 12th, you and three people that you picked to come with you are going to be joining me at B. Smith's, which is a restaurant here Mm -hmm. in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Barbara and her husband, Dan. Um, The B. Smith's restaurant is a wonderful place. A meet and greet, and we're going to have a pre-show reception, and then we're all going to go over to Color Purple afterwards, the Color Purple, and see the see the, see the play, okay? Oh, my God, that's wonderful. And so now, who are you going to share the other three passes with? Okay, my wife. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that, that threw me. That threw me, too. Okay, go ahead. Okay, probably my best friend and her wife. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, so then uh, we're going to put you on hold and take all your information behind the scenes and have a very happy holiday. And I will be seeing you and all your girls on January 12th. Okay. Thank you. Oh, God, you're very welcome. So what is the deal with online? I need to tell people because people who purchase their tickets online for the Duns and Divas extravaganza. Hey, Nicole, can you um come here and, and just tell me what it is with online? She, I forget what it is. She told me something about um, if you purchase, purchased your tickets online, then you'll be getting some sort of email blast or something through PayPal <laughs> or, or something. <laughs> hey, Nicole! Oh, she must be in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, her in the boss's office. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know. Maybe she's on the telephone. There's something that happens, though. Camille. Camille Carey. Shout out to you in the 203. Camille. Oh, uh, wait. Here comes the call. Hey, by the way, we announced uh, last hour Terrence Howard will be in the building along with Bobby Brown and Mary J. Blige. Now, Nicole, I just need a, a, a brief, just just if you tell everybody what they do, if they purchase their tickets online, they they get an email, get an email fax com- to them or something? They get an email confirmation, an email blast with, their, with, with the location, the time of the event. And when do they get this email blast? They're getting it periodically. Okay. Starting from yesterday. Starting from yesterday. Mm-hmm. So now, our, the Pink Room is now a 24-hour operation until yes. 7 p.m. on Thursday night. Yes. People are even emailing me, and that's fine, and I'm responding. Letting them know res- where it is. Okay. So now, We're working together. there's some people who could be getting their blast at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. <coughs> because there's some people who are emailing me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so there's your answer. Um, and, and regarding those of you who have actual physical tickets in your hand, if you look on the tickets, you will see a telephone number that you call. You call that telephone number with your ticket confirmation number. Mm-hmm. And then it, it, we have live people, not a recording. Live people answering the phones. In the pink room. Right. Answering the phones. Once again, the Wendy Williams Experience Pink Room is now a tw- is a 24-hour operation until, actually, I guess it would be like a 48-hour op- yes. until Thursday at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And you will be able to call. I don't care if it's 4 o'clock in the morning. They might be laying on the couch or one of the blow-up beds in there. Give them a moment to get to the phone. And like calling somebody's house. <laughs> right, that's right. Exactly. And then they'll tell you where the party is. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. Is the food in there? Yeah. Good. I got a head headache. I mean, um, <laughs> a hair headache. My clips. I feel like rearranging them, but I'm like, what's the point? I'm about to go home and take them off anyway. <laughs> Clips are pulling my damn head. Ow. All right. So we'll continue with the break, everybody. Be, be, be here for the Hour of Truth coming up at the top of the hour. D-Penny. Government system. The 
Taking it back, baby. Taking it back. Old school short shot. Yes. The rhythm, the ripple. Two, three, play. A little play from back in the day. You know me, it's Wendy, man. Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams experience. 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 This is Wayne Wonder. This is Shoggy. This is Mega Man Live out of Jamaica. I'm me. Shabalantin. This is Junior One Blood Read. When I'm in town, I tune into Wendy Williams show. Yeah, for the- yeah. got a couple of Fox Brown celebrity spottings. The first one is from a woman who's Wendy, I saw Foxy Brown over the weekend. She was at the Gap on 5th Avenue at 34th Street, and she was shopping in the bank section after she came from Gucci. I, I spoke very slowly so she could read my lips. She was very nice. I can't believe how small she is in person. Hmm. That's a shout out to you, Foxy. And thank you. Um, you didn't sign your name, whoever sent this. Also, in the newspaper today, it says that um, Foxy Brown was on her best behavior while Christmas shopping in Henry Bendel's uh, last week. After buying cashmere sweaters, the minuscule motor mouth bought two Brock Emden bags. All right. I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay, that's over my head. Without even getting, getting into a fight. What kind of bag is that? Do I need to be up on that? <laughs> oh, hell. Oh, whatever. Um, however, um, as she walked out, the rapper spied another bag that she liked better and demanded to exchange the, the bag that she bought on the spot. She also stocked up... Uh, excuse me. Ashanti was there stocking up on cashmere sweaters and Kate Winslet, too. You know what bag I scored that I, I'm really proud that I did? While I was in Berlin... I went into the Louis Vuitton store there out of sheer boredom, and um, I spotted, I don't even know what the hell you call the damn bag. Um, it, you know, it's for, it's for the spring into the summer. It's the beach bags. Have you seen them? They're canvas, and they say Louis Vuitton trunks and bags on the outside. So I feel like I'm the only woman in the entire tri-state area that has this bag right now because I have yet to see it, you know, at the, at the Louis Vuitton store on, um, on Fifth Avenue. So I feel real special. <laughs> I scored it in Europe <laughs> on somebody else's dime I might add <laughs> so Christina Applegate is a wild cheat huh well the newspaper is saying that she wasn't the only one in her marriage with the wandering eye good that's good sisters be doing it for ourselves <laughs> it might not be right but oh well sisters be doing it too okay that's good the bad part is is that they say that his her, his, her soon to be ex-husband has a petite blonde girlfriend who apparently he was you know sliding in on the side of the marriage too see in a perfect world it would be he who was faithful and she who was doing it for herself I don't contone cheating in any way, but you know, it, it, you know, everyone once in a while, it is nice to see, you know, a woman jump up and set it off, like Jessica Simpson and Johnny Black, or what's that man's name from the movie? Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not right, but I learned from the best. I learned it from you. <laughs> Did Michael Jackson pay off his debt or is his mom and all oh, them homeless? <laughs> I mean, what's really good? Did he come up with that $270 million in 24 hours? <laughs> Has the Fortress Investment Company swooped down on his situation? <coughs> Catherine doesn't have to worry about a thing because she's living in Las Vegas in a house brought by Janet. And Janet still has money. And when her money runs out, J.D. has money. And J.D.'s not going to be leaving Janet because he still can't believe he got her. Fat or thin. You know what I mean? <laughs> In the meantime, speaking of sisters doing it for ourselves, <laughs> Serena Williams is thrilled to be living the single life. And she's planning on getting herself a T-shirt advertising her status. You know, she's no longer with the director, Brett Ratner. They broke up earlier this year. And she and her sister, Venus, are single. And here's the quote from Serena. 
we're going to get T-shirts that say, I'm single. And on the back, it's going to say, so is my sister. Yeah. <laughs> Was I talking about Tyrese earlier? Okay, let's talk about him again. So he's got his new CD. Oh, wait. This just in from Yadmin. Thank you. Kanye's good record stands for getting out our dreams. Oh, it's not as arrogant as I thought. Oh, Kanye. Getting out our dreams records. Thank you, Yadamin. Um, shout out to Ketlin in Nork the Bricks. Yeah, Lenny Kravitz is not a legendary rocker. He's just a rocker, right? He's not, le don't confuse the legendary word yet. So Tyrese, you know, he's got this album out, coming out, that ventures into the rap territory called Alter Ego. And here's a quote from him, because it's, um, it's a double CD, half rap and half R&B. I go in tonight with Robin, Lady of Rage, Allen, and Yo-Yo. And I'm with Ice Cube on Monday and Tuesday. There's been some incredible moments I couldn't have asked or even prayed for such support. He's ready for his 16 bars. And I talked about Khalees earlier because um, she and Nas, you know, they got their... Dons and Divas invites and whatnot. And, and so she's got her album coming out. It's called The Puppeteer. It'll be out in the spring. And she says it's like got a bossy edge. One of those women be doing it for ourselves type themes, which in some ways translates into bossy, bitchy. You know what I'm saying? So she says um, just another strong kind of girl record. It's a lot of fun. The record's going to be released, everybody, in January. The video um, will be shot later on this month. Too Short and Nas appear on the song Bossy. And um, this is what she says. I'm a solo artist and I do solo albums. Um, she does, however, work with some big-name producers like Scott Storch and Raphael Sadiq and Max Martin and Damian Elliott. So good luck, Khalees. Alrighty, it's about time to wrap up the show. Everybody, don't forget, you can go to my website and find out uh, more about the show or, you know, whatever, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. While you're there, you might want to go to the people poll question. And the people poll question, to, well, yesterday was, uh, do you and your coworkers exchange Christmas gifts? And 45% of you said no. And 55% of you said Wait, 45% of you said yes, and 55% of you said no. The people poll question today, and you can go to the website and answer yes or no, is <coughs> will you be spending the holidays with your family? Your blood, fa your blood family. Yes or no? And you can go to the wendywilliamsexperience.com. In the meantime, I love you for listening today. Thank you so much for being here, and God willing... We will all be together again tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye. Peace, party people. <laughs> See you later. I'm not saying bye bye. Good night. Program complete. Okay. The coast is clear. And get ready for the bonus hour. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, mommy. Happy to go. Here. Uh -oh. oh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, Back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40-something-year-old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. 
Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. <coughs> oh. <coughs> One, two. Oh, my microphone light isn't working on. Oh, yeah, there it is again. Hey, everybody. So the courts are fining the New York City transit strikers $1 million a day. New York's subways and bus workers are on strike, as we all know. I set my alarm for midnight to wake up to watch the news to see. You did? Yes. <laughs> And then I drifted off back to sleep, but I had it set for 3, 3 a.m. To, to wake up again. And I got all caught up. And then I opened a bottle of champagne at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Isn't that messed up? There's something a little twisted about that. <laughs> opened up the bottle, a bottle of Giorgio Vaselli champagne. It's mm-hmm. my champagne. Just in from France. So did most of you go to work today or did you shop? Uh, You know, there was a lot of foot traffic in Manhattan, not a whole lot of um, tunnel traffic. I know when I came into the city, like I putzed around and then left the house at like 1130 and I thought I'd be in traffic uh, up until two o'clock. But I got here really quick. I was, you know, at the radio station by 1215. Like no problem at all. Fifth Avenue was blocked off, you know, but other than that, it was it was. Great, but millions of people, millions of commuters, shoppers, tourists are just stranded at the height of the Christmas rush. And so the judge immediately slapped a $1 million a day fine on the union. And um, how long is this going to last? Do you think that this will be over by Friday? Okay, do you think it'll be over by next Tuesday? Maybe. <laughs> I hope so. My whole squad managed to get in today, though. You know, I mean, we're fortunate in that, you know, the show is from 2 to 7. So, you know, we didn't have to deal with that four people in a car thing. But um, I think Elisa, Elisa picked up three other interns in, in Brooklyn and came in. And then Nicole, one of our interns, she went back up. To, she's from the Bronx and she, or Mickle with an M. She went back up to the Bronx to get Nicole with an N, who lives in the Bronx. And Trev Hollywood, he waited until after 11. He came in from Yonkers. And, uh, you know, Goose, you managed. Taryn, you managed. Everybody everybody managed. Yeah, you waited until 11. This is the time, I think, that that, um, bosses are probably judging workers. Like, you know... (laughs) You know, because when budget gets short and during summer of 2006 or whenever, when you least expect it and they're doing budget cuts, they're going to turn their calendar back to this holiday season and see who actually came in in spite of the transit strike. And if it wasn't you, your name could be at the top of the list. So for those of you who took off today, please um, be mindful of uh, that you're being watched and work twice as hard as all the jerks who actually showed up at work. (laughs) So, Bo Derek um, turned down several reality TV shows, she says, because the idea of having her privacy invaded was just absolutely... Not even a thought. I guess when you think about Bo Derek, you think like chasing Farrah could be like, you know, chasing Bo or something like that. They're both, you know, beautiful women from yesteryear who still have a certain amount of interest, you know, from, you know, people today. But Bo says the stupidest one was a sort of auntie name where I take these underprivileged kids and we go on a safari, we go on trips and we take, <coughs> we eliminate them one by one to end up getting one of them who we give a scholarship to. She said, I have a problem with this because of eliminating kids. I'm fine with taking them on safari. I just 
can't every week say you got to go back to public housing. And they told her, we'll work this out. But Bo admits it was an, uh, an absolute turnoff. Yeah. She still looks good. She was on Will and Grace. Um, and I, I recently saw her on the red carpet. Not, not personally, but in like the Inquirer or something like that. She looks good. Do you guys have any big plans for New Year's Eve? I know Christmas is right around the corner. New Year's Eve is like not one of those things that people do anymore. Do people still go to Times Square? Is that so 80s? <laughs> Times, or is that just for tourists? I don't know. I'll be at the Cricket Club in Irvington, New Jersey with DJ Mark the 45 King. <laughs> That's right. The Cricket Club will not be crickets that night, though. And DJ Qua putting it down. Yeah, I like to keep it close, you know, in uh, for New Year's Eve. You know, even if we go over, like, friend's house or something like that. I'm not, you know, trying to go out to Long Island to a friend's house. Like, I want to go to a friend's house who live, like, in East Orange, Montclair, like, right in the area. And if I host a party, I like to do it um, close. If you happen to live in Brooklyn, though, or, you know, um, in, in, you know, one of the boroughs, Brooklyn New Year's Eve is going to be crazy. There's this club there called The Rain. <coughs> it's owned by Foxy Brown's. Former partner Don Poo. They're still cool, by the way. Um, and Poo is um, having Keisha Cole at his club, which is Club Rain, on New Year's Eve. They're giving away a mink. And they got the open bar going on. So, you know, shout out to everybody in Brooklyn. You might not want to go far. Maybe you want to go to Club Rain on New Year's Eve. I don't know. Keisha's online, too. She's a college student in Queens. She wants to talk about the strike. Hey, Keisha, what's going on? Hi, Wendy. Hi. This is Keisha from Queens. I know. How are you? I'm going to give you a big fan. Thank you. Wendy, I have... Hi, Wendy. Hi. No, turn your radio down, Keisha, please. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Wendy. Yes. Two things. Number one, um, can you hear me? Yes, Keisha, go ahead. Right. First of all, I just want to say... This strike, I think, is very devastating, especially to the students, because a lot of them, how do they get to and from work and school? Yeah. A lot of them have, a lot of them have finals. I was going to say, isn't this finals time? Yes. The Christmas, the Christmas, the Christmas um, St. John's University, Mm-mm-mm. that's finals. Mm-mm-mm. These kids have finals. How are they getting to and from work? And to take the local, like the, <laughs> the vans, yeah. they're charging 5 and $10 a pop. I way. know, I know. They're raping it out there. <sighs> So it's just crazy. Well, so what are the college professors saying? Are they being, um, you know, easy on you all? Or are they saying, well, you know, the diligent students show up. The rest of you all get Fs. No, well, some of them probably have, like, transportation or carpooling and mm-hmm, whatnot. Mm-hmm. Well, um, thank you. Thank you for calling, Keisha. Happy holidays. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. Your biggest fan. Thank you, Keisha. I have one confession. Th- what? A conf- I'm a transsexual. Oh. Uh, Oh, all right. As how you doing? How you doing? Yes. Bye, Keisha. Bye, bye, boo. Bye, bye. Uh, let's go to line number four. Joy is there from New Jersey, and she wants to comment about the caller whose father um, is cheating on her mother. Hi, Joy. Hey, um, you know, Wendy, I I called before about that intern that you had, and I'm getting ready to scream on you again. Okay. That was the wrong advice to give her. Why should she subject herself to going to Christmas dinner when she feels as awful as she does? Why okay. should she have to fake the feeling? Well, why are you mad at the intern? I'm the one who gave the advice. No, 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 no. I'm talking about I called a while ago about an intern that I screamed on and you let us battle that out on the radio. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. Um, but you know yeah. what? Here's the thing. If are you she- being pink when you gave her that advice, though? Well... I'm being mindful of the grandchild and the grandmother. And the grandmother does not know anything. So if she doesn't show up, this is going to alarm her mother, the child's grandmother. Exactly what it should do. No, not on, mother- not on Christmas Day, you cold, hard black woman. Be pink, <laughs> be pink for a moment. Now, but she, she feels horrible. That her father is having an affair. She's not going to feel any better on Christmas Day, all of that fake family mess. This is not about her feeling better. This is about her mother and her son. You know, her grand, the mother's grand. The holidays to me, to me, 
is not the time to ruffle feathers. If you wanted to get home, exactly. oh, but hold exactly. on. The, the same thing happened to me over Thanksgiving. But and here's but happened, here's the deal. I away from that Thanksgiving dinner. You know why? Because I can't stand to look at your face. While we're sitting there having an enjoyable dinner. Oh, is that with your father was having an affair and you didn't want to go? <laughs> Not that situation. I mean, it's something that was more personal to me. Okay. Do you have children? No. But see, that's why you're still hard and black about it. You know, you know, as a mother, I recognize the connection between the grandparents. And I also am mindful of blowing up the spot on holidays. Because prior to being a family woman myself, holiday schmoliday is just another day. If I got something to say, I'm going to say it. I'm going to rock my neck. I'm going to bulge my eyes like thyroid. And I'm going to tell you how I feel. Then I'm going to turn on my heels and leave the house. But now, you know, that I've pinkened a little bit, I save all that. for If you want to blow up a spot... Then you either do it before the holidays or you wait until after. You don't pick right, Christmas. Well, the next day, the next day then. She should do it the next day. Well, then, but see, here's the problem with Christmas. The next day, a week early. later is New Year's Eve. Oh, here we go. Just let her mother ride out, damn you. Okay, okay, Wendy, you know what? What, I Joy? Extra, I was going to buy the extra money for the VIP, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. So hopefully you guys will mingle with us. In the, um, I'll be uh, everywhere in the party. Okay, well, I'll see you there. And don't say you guys, because Mary J. Blige is her own woman. She can do what she wants. Well, I'm just making sure. It's just that I didn't want to spend the extra money if I knew that you guys were going to come down and mingle with us. Well, doggone you, the hors d'oeuvres and the open bar is going to be throughout the whole party. So All drink. Right. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Well, take care. Bye, Wendy. Bye. Joy, she's very cute. It's hard. But you want to know what, though? Um, we announced that Oscar nominee Terrence Howard will be in the building on Thursday night at the Dons and D- Divas Extravaganza. I just announced that during the 4 o'clock hour today. And, of course, Bobby Brown will be in the building. And, of course, Mary J. Blige with her new CD, Breakthrough in Stores Today, will be in the building. And, um, you know, Ron Artest will be in the building. Uh, uh, excuse me, Busta Rhyme, who's, who's new single... Like, I was just talking to somebody. I, actually, today I just found out that, that Buster confirmed. Was I talking in my head or was I talking in the pink room? I can't remember. Yeah. I was talking in my head? <laughs> no, I think I, no, because I was having a two-way conversation. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, that could have been in my head. I don't know. Maybe I was talking to Fabiola Carrington. I can't, I don't. <laughs> I think I was talking to Elisa and Nicole, though. Yes, I was talking to Elisa and Nicole because they were saying, you know what, at the end of the day, when it comes to working a crowd at a, a concert, like, you know, as hip hop goes, Busta has like incredible energy, that's true. regardless of, you know, how long he's been around and stuff like that. I like his new single and that's what I came in to say. I think I heard C play it or something like that, you know, on my way into work. But I like his new single and um, they said the energy. And then I mentioned that the Blastmaster puts that kind of show on too, KRS-One. I mean, he puts on an incredible, incredible show. Just incredible. Man, we haven't heard from Red Man in a while. I wonder how he's doing. Man, well, let's go to um, line number one. Tara's in Queens, and she's calling to say, hey. Hey. Hey, Tara. Hey, Wendy. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm Okay. You know what I wanted to ask you? I wanted to tell you Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thanks. But just a quick question. Mm-hmm. Um, you ever heard about? Pro- you ever heard anything negative about Proactive Solution? No, everybody uses it. Everybody. Yeah, I, I have to go. I, I went to my dermatologist, yeah. and the medicine he gave me was just way too strong. So I'm like, I just want to go and um, get some Proactive. So I want to try it. But I figured, let me ask Wendy since she's out there and you know out there and you know you know a little bit of everything in the. Um, and what, what's going on? Let me ask you: Is she anything negative about proactive? Well, when you see the bumple still skins that Van- that um, Vanessa and uh, um, I've never noticed it about Puffy, although he is on the infomercial. But um, I do know that that Jessica Simpson is prone to the bumple still skin, and Britney Spears is prone to the bumple still skin, and and they swear by the proactive, and and their faces look really well. And I and I've seen. And it- I've, it really does. I've seen Vanessa prior to her, you know, being down with Proactive. And a beautiful woman, don't get me wrong, but she does have uh, acne-prone skin. And, oh, and when she okay. comes in the studio and I look at her, you can't even tell any of that. And no, it's not a bunch of makeup covering, you know, a really? bunch of acne goo. Yeah. 
Okay, you sold me on it because I have what you call adult acne. Yeah, I, I got worse. you. Mm, yeah. I, I can't take it anymore. And it's like, I'm just breaking out. It's just like breaking out. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to try it and see what happens. And if it works, it works. If it don't. Where do you, you know? get it? On your chin, your forehead? Where do you get it? I'm actually getting it all over. And I really get it um, when I'm um, when it's that time of month. So it, it's yeah. the worst right now. It's really adult acne. I feel like I'm a 15-year-old with all these pimples on my face. Wow. But, but it doesn't look bad. But you know what my problem is? I have a problem with picking. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody loves to squeeze. You ever squeeze one real good and it shoots off to the mirror? Exactly. Oh, I love that. I love exactly. that. You ever, you ever squeeze one and you can not just hear the, the skin pop, but you feel it? Like you feel oh your God, skin I break? That, <laughs> love that. I can vibe with you on that one because that's it. And that's the problem. So Tell me this. If I get something, I, you know, maybe yeah. I can get that cleared up so I won't have to pop. Did that. you ever squeeze one and it comes out like a long, endless stream? Yes, that's a, oh, like that's a good one. Oh, that's a real good good one and you ever take the stuff off and squish it between your fingers and like wow exactly. yeah you ever get one of those cysts under your arms it's all full of goo oh, and you yeah, squeeze so that and it shoots off to the mirror and it's a combination of blood and pus yes. and it's like a science project because you take the lighter and you you light up your your needle and then you hold the, your bump real firm like and yes. then you stick it yes. and it, and it, it's hard to break the skin but then it slides in yes. and it slides in about an inch that bump is like an inch and then you pull it out and right behind the, the pin coming out, all the stuff comes out, and it oozes on your fingers and splashes on the mirror. Oh, there is nothing like a good pimple popping it's, session. It, it isn't, but I got to get rid of these. I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> But thank you so much for this very good talking to you. I, you know what I'm saying? I listen to you every day. I have everybody in my office that comes in listening to you. They can't listen to nothing else. No, thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for listening. No problem. Take care. Have a good holiday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you ever get things in the back of your throat? That's what me and my sister would call them when we were younger. We'd get things. They, right back here are the polyps. And if you... You could chase them out. Sometimes you have to prod them out with a bobby pin. Yes. You ever get the things? Yes, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I used to get them all the time. I used to like to take them out, put them on my fingers, smush them together, and smell them. They smell like they smell like straight up raw behind. Don't tell me you never smell the thing. See, I might be the one with the guts to say it. And I know I'm a woman of a certain age. Oh well, I'm still very sophomoric. I pay my bills on time though, and I pay my taxes. You always have to say that when you say something really sophomoric and immature, because then people just think, you know, you just a, you don't know how to take care of your kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tamara in the Bronx wants to disagree about Lenny Kravitz. She thinks he's legendary. That's line number seven. Let's talk. Now, Tamara, you know I love Lenny Kravitz. But I just don't think he's legendary. I just don't think that he's the blind item. He's not legendary. I think it is. I do think that he is. Why? Okay. Lenny Kravitz is huge. He's broken so many stereotypes True. as far as African American and rock music are concerned. Well, old boy from Living Color did it first, and I don't even remember his name. That's why Lenny Kravitz is a legend, because you can remember his name. That's Old boy is huge in Japan, even. I know. Uh... <laughs> then why are you saying he's not a legend? Because legend and huge are two different things to me. Okay, I can't disagree with you there, but I still think he's a legend. But I do agree with you with the mother and the, the father thing, and she should wait till after the holidays. Because yeah. it would be a mess to blow that up during Thanksgiving. What am I saying Thanksgiving? Christmas dinner or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And if she doesn't show up, then, you know, her mother's going to be wondering why, and her mother's going to be like, I want to see the baby. I'm going to, you know. And why is she playing, placing all this blame on the mistress? Her father was the one who stuck his thing in her. Exactly. What is the, I don't know what's going on, but Wendy, I love you. You gave me my first tickets on the lipstick station to see LL Cool J. You'll always be good with me, and I love you as death, Wendy. Thank you so much, Ta- Ta- Tamara. <laughs> ha- have a good holiday. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's go to line number six. Kim is there from Long Island. All it says on the computer is that you want a shout out, but I know you want more than that, right? Turn your radio down. Hey, Kim. Hey, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing fine. What's going on out there in Long Island? Oh, gosh. Nothing. It's boring. I'm trying to get to uh, the city to that undisclosed location. Well, do you need the Long Island um, location telephone number? Um, yes, please. But I'm driving right now. Oh, you, well, can you remember Vibes Hair Salon, hair salon in Hempstead? 
Yeah, what's the, what's the name of it again? Vibe, like Vibe magazine. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. In Hempstead. Okay. Oh, boy, over there, he's got the tickets. All right, well, I'm definitely going to um, check that out. I got to be there. Excellent. It's on North Franklin, by the way, 98 North Franklin in Long Island. Oh, great. Okay. So, um, what, what I miss, I never get to hear your show except for the bonus hour on my drive home. And when I hear everybody, you know, calling in and, and uh, giving their comments, it's... You feel like you, you missed out on the original yeah. story earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. So what happened? What was the drama with the, the, the holidays and the mama and the... Well, no. It, it, yeah, no. We'll move on. I mean, that in a nutshell, a young lady um, it works at the same place that her father works. It's been circulating around the workplace that the father had been having an affair with one of the other co-workers. This rumor cropped up back in 2001. She confronted her father. She confronted the mistress. They both denied what was going on. She was in her father's office back in August and found an email email exchange from both of them about, you know, buy me this and I love you and all this other kind of sappy stuff, clearly stating that they've been having this affair. So it's been carried on since at least 2001 and now August of 2005, she finds out that it's for real. And now here are the holidays, and she's telling me she doesn't want to go to her parents' house. Her parents are still married. The oh, mo- she has to go. She can't blow it up for the holidays. I agree with you there. Exactly. And if you've known something about this or been suspicious since 2001, and then you got the email in 2005, don't wait until Christmas to all of a sudden, you know, jump up. I told her, wait until after New Year's Day. Invite your mother over to your apartment. She doesn't live at the house. I said, invite your mother over to your house for the weekend. And don't hint around. Tell your mother what's going on. Normally, I say stay out of grown people's business except in the case of certain people like I would definitely tell my mother that my father was having an affair and I would offer my mother full support and an extra room for uh, half the rent well that, that's you know that's good advice and you always, hey. well you mostly hey. give good advice I would say I, mean, you I know, don't know sometimes you're hard and sometimes you know you're soft and pink and as a fellow cancer I don't know how you do that and, and I've been um, waiting for the opportunity to ask you that well, because, hard, you know, that's why we have a shell. As Cancer the Crab, that's why we have a shell. And our shell is the thing that protects us from being stepped on by the world. Because the universe knows that we're soft and pink. Yeah, and that we, we will be annihilated by, you know, the, the, the strong and the mighty. So we have a strong and mighty shell that enables us to do amazing things, just like hard black people. But inside, we always feel bad about doing the hard black. Right. Don't we? <laughs> But we all have it in us, though. But we do. We do all have it in us. Oh, well, that was really, you know, that was a good uh, explanation. You know, I, I'm surprised I've never heard that before because I am in my 30s and I am a cancer. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you know what? And it just becomes a survival tool, you know. When I was younger, I was more pink. You know, as I, you know, moved into my 20s and, you know, stuff started happening, I started getting stepped on, whether it be personally or career-wise or whatever. And then eventually you just man up and and, you know... You know, and, and I look forward to the rest of life getting harder every day while maintaining soft and pink. Every day I get stronger to be harder. Well, that's 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 real good advice. I have one final thing to say, and then I'm going to go, because this is something that I've heard you be tough on, and it's with your um, interns. And, you know, sometimes people don't aren't always as focused when they're in their teenage years. And I have teenage kids now. So I'm trying to get them to focus so that they're not, you know, struggling the way I'm struggling in yeah. my 30s, raising, you know, a single, single mother. And, you know, when I hear you, like, not give some people opportunities at the um, station and not, you know, I'm not, I understand you have your principles about um, not hiring if they're not in college or not doing internship for, like, grown folks. But, you know, what would you say to someone who is maybe past a certain age that's looking to make a career move like that? I mean and has that hustling spirit and has everything else, but maybe they just, you know, got on a bandwagon a little late. Well, you know... Here's the thing. Hi, that's funny. Well, I'm I I would say I would say you know how Tarzan swings from swings through the jungle on those vines. Never let go of one vine until you have a firm grasp of the other. A grasp of the other, and that's what my advice would be to adults doing career moves. You got to have a firm grasp, just like Tarzan. You know, he never let go of a vine and fell down. You got to swing through the jungle with a firm grasp on every vine. 
So, you know, I mean, I wish you well if you're thinking of a career move. But just remember, you know, being a 30 something means you have 30 something responsibilities for you, including kids, for you, including bills bigger than a 21 year old and 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 and, and no doubt shopping taste you know, more sophisticated than a 21 year old girl. So if you want to maintain all the glorious things that you worked for in life and still do a career change, don't let go of one vine until you have a firm grasp of the, uh, of the new one, unless you want to fall in the Valley and take your kids with you. No, thank you. But I do appreciate your advice. You know, I take that advice for myself and I would like to hear you give that same advice to some of the other people. Cause sometimes, you know, it sounds like you're cutting them down and killing their dreams. And, and I always go back to those people because I know, you know, I've had opportunities. I've even had a little bit of experience in the music business, right. um, you know, with the band that, that was, had some platinum success and everything. And now I'm back in, like, corporate America. And so I've been on both sides of the fence. And I have a, you know, pretty decent and stable job and everything. And what do you want to get back into singing? Oh, Sorry, Lord. say it again. You, do you want to get back into singing? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not a singer. I actually oh. had a behind-the-scenes job with oh. um, singers. Okay. Well, but I, I, you know, I know both sides of it. And yeah. so sometimes, you know, I, I reminisce on those days because it's fun. It's hard work. Yeah. But, you know, the, the money's there. Yeah. And when you tell people, like, you know, if they're a little bit past, the, you know, out of school or whatever, sometimes the way you deal with them, I feel like, you know, you kind of kill their spirit. Well, sometimes people do have to be realistic about what they want out of life. You know, I I mean, and that and and unfortunately, I only have a certain amount of time in the in the breaks for the four hour part of the show. I mean, you know, you see, you and I have been luxuriating in conversation for way too long. I love you, Wendy. Thank you. But at least I'm not being cut off by commercials and the affiliates, you know, saying, all right, we got to go, you know, you know, the bigger business is what I'm saying. Totally but, understand. So sometimes on the twenty second. You know what? Uh, oh, uh, b- b- hold that thought for a second. Sometimes my answers are given short and curt because of lack of time, and then sometimes okay. it's just because I'm being nasty and evil. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll see you with Don's and Divas girl. Terrence Howard's going to be in the building. You know he's up for an Oscar. Yes. <laughs> Bobby Brown, he loves a good party. He's there. Mary J. Blige. What? Yeah, he's coming for that check. I got to be there to see that. You know what I'm saying? That's oh okay. He's got that. Hey, so you got your black already? All picked out. Now, are you mixing colors? Are you going to be wearing a uh, different color pair of shoes or anything Don't like that? Don't play the squad boom music in the background. Black, <laughs> all black. All black. Me too. Well, you know what? I think that I'm, I, I have a choice of three different shoes, and I think I'm going with the crystal embellishments. This one pair of shoes that I have, my, um, even though they're size 12s, and they, oh. they, they ribbon up my my ankles but my ankles are too thick and the ribbon doesn't wrap around the, the amount of times that it does on a normal girl so so I was over next to the manor in, in Orange, New Jersey at the ragtag shop, shop next to Kmart today did you buy more ribbon? Uh, yes I bought more ribbon <laughs> that's the story of my life always having to add I gotta be there to see that ribbon for Canada. When I come up to you and I remind you of this conversation, you're gonna know it's me. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking See you later. <laughs> you know, your average girl can take the, the ankle ties, you know, and tie them around your ankles like three feminine ties times, and then it ends up in a nice bow with plenty of spillover from the bow. Big broad like me, it comes around twice and it's barely a little knot. It, there's not even enough material to make the, the luxurious tie. I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is that, you know, when you buy a size 12 uh, heel, they make it for a very narrow, like Victoria's Secret model. So they still got the wrong, so- you know, they make it for like Tyra Banks or Heidi Klum, who can still wind it three times and have all that meat left on the bow. <laughs> Not for a big broad like me, the size 12. You know, I need more meat added to the bow to make a nice bow. And don't be looking at my feet at the party because I told you I'm wearing an evening gown. 
But when I do go to the stage, I've been practicing how I walk up the steps in those presumed shoes. I practice in the house when nobody's looking. <laughs> and so I hold it with two hands and I walk up the steps and then I drop the evening gown. <laughs> and then I walk ever so slowly because I don't want to trip over him. I'm really clumsy. I don't want to trip over the hem. I walk, walk, walk. And so when I'm standing on the stage, you're not going to be able to see the bow. <laughs> or the psoriasis, as long as you're looking. I guess we probably have to take a break, don't we? Yes. Any more tuna fish sandwiches left back there? Any more of that mozzarella and tomato? <laughs> I can't do that. That binds me. I love doing this radio show. I really do. Oh, you know what? We're going into the commercials. Can I hit it off with a live with a live read? Let me just talk to you about my friend Stephanie Cohen and her fabulous husband Benny. And oh, by the way, they've already RSVP'd. They're going to be at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza too. Stephanie and Ben, they own this fabulous place called Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. It's located in Secaucus, New Jersey. They're at 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Um, they, they have an interior design team that will help you out if you don't have the vision. It's okay. The store telephone number is 201-617-9000. I talk about them. They're clients here at the radio station. They, they did a guest room at our house, and they also did about four different offices, including mine and who could it be, Steve Harvey, uh, office. Um, just wonderful. If you go to the website at stephaniecohen.com, you'll be able to see their stuff. This is not the stuff that you see, 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 see everywhere, you know, with pressed wood and cheap glue and stuff that falls. This is real furniture for real people, grown people stuff. They got the Martha Stewart Signature Gallery Collection. I'm not talking about Martha Kmart. No, 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 no. Martha is diversified. She's got grown furniture. It's really, really nice. And um, they've just launched at the Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports in Secaucus the Stephanie Cohen Furniture Line because they don't just own the place. They breathe and live furniture for years and years. This is a family business. The rug selection is incredible and the prices are phenomenal. If you, if you have something in your mind and you don't see it there, let them get it for you. Tom handles the rugs. The prices are wholesale prices. It is a retail store. They've got two floors of furniture and a very, very large selection of rugs in the back. It's Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. Don't forget about that interior design service. Sometimes you don't quite have the vision and you need the pros. Let Stephanie and her, you know, um, staff of pros help you out. You know, they're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. StephanieCohen.com. Stephanie and Ben own the place, and it is safe to say Wendy Williams sent you, or anybody from WBLS, because they've done a number. Say Steve sent you. Steve loves his office. Sometimes I come into work at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and Steve is still here. <laughs> you know, normally morning guys leave at like 10.01, as soon as the morning show is over. Not, not who could it be Steve Harvey. <laughs> And I got to tell you, his office is done like a pimp's palace. It's not even done with a desk. There's no desk, no filing cabinet. It's like, this is a workplace. What kind of work do you get done in here? <laughs> the walls are bright red. It's a very Moroccan type feel in there. He's got the big, tall candles and the, and the fabulous rug. He's got the flat screen TV and the... What color are his sofas? Are they black or are they red? I just can't even remember. I walked in there one time. I felt like, hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, you can say Wendy sent you, you say Steve sent you, you say Dion sent you, say, just, you know what, tell them that you heard about it here from your family and friends at WBLS. That's Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, the caucus, New Jersey, 201-617-9000, 201-617-9000. Thank you. The WBLS Christmas party was a party with a purpose. The people get hang out, get food. It was a really nice atmosphere. Grown and sexy people. It was excellent. I got a chance to meet a lot of nice people. Everything was really nice. Everything. A party with a purpose. The party definitely had a purpose. 
special thanks to our performers. Hey, what's up? This is your man, Jaheim. This is Vinny Grant. I want to thank WBLS for inviting me to their party with the purpose. Thanks to all y'all who came out to party with the purpose. It was wonderful, and I can't wait to do it again. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, y'all. Also, special thanks to Guapale and Cameo. Our sponsors, the Department of Health, Razak, Jamaica Bid, and Preferred Equity Solutions. Along with a big thanks to you. All our WBLS listeners who came out to support WBLS was able to present day one with a check for $10,000. Spreading a little cheer for the holiday season and throughout the year. Oh, hey, everybody in the WBLS staff, y'all really hooked the brother up. Thank you. We're 107.5 WBLS. Every day, all Every day. Morning. Today's R&B and classic soul. Hey, what's up? This your boy Trey Songz, baby. You listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Cheer. Cheer. <laughs> You know, I'm looking at the front cover of the National Enquirer with the um, gay affair. Angelina Jolie's ex-lover speaks out. And Brad is humiliated. <laughs> Brad, you should have known what you were getting into. We read about this story like two years ago. The same lover. The, she's an Asian girl. Very um, uh, masculine looking. I haven't read the article yet. Shout out to the National Enquirer. You know what? Shout out to In Touch Magazine. They're going to be covering the pink carpet at the at the Dons and D- the Divas Extravaganza. Shout out to Trina's Perfume and Trina Diamond Princess. We have gift bags for the, in the VIP, and there's going to be some great stuff in the gift bags, including some Razak hair care products, some Condom Mania flavored condoms, Trina's new perfume, Diamond Princess Dollhouse stuff. Have you ever been to? Have you ever seen Dollhouse jeans and shoes? They go to size eleven. Dollhouse.com. Steve Madden, friend to the show. He's putting stuff in the gift bags. Shout out to Jewel at, at, at Smooth Magazine. They got the gift bags cover. Real nice stuff in the gift bags. The office right now, the pink room looks like a warehouse of, of product. I mean, there are boxes everywhere. Like, literally, this party is like such an in-house stuff. And I'm just so proud of everybody just like pulling together, you know, my whole squad of people. And, of course, Question Mark Entertainment and, and Brian Love Entertainment. Excuse me, Face Down. What's up, Brian? Face Down Entertainment. Big Kev. You know, it's just a, a really L'Oreal Technique hair care. Okay. I have been opening those gift boxes and, and bringing stuff home. Because <laughs> the night of the Don's of Divas, I don't want to carry around a gift bag, but I love free. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Rhea Rhea Anaconda Bags. Shout out to Brooke. Brooke is doing all the model's hair. And, and the girl's makeup in the pink room. Which is really nice. The models are the models that are, you know, going to be walking around the party looking all sexy. <sighs> Shout out to Jennifer Temp's, it's Jennifer Temp Agency, um, which happens to be a black-owned temp agency in Manhattan. She is supplying all the helpers that Shawnee, the caterer, needs for the party, you know, to hold the platters and, you know, bring it around the whole party. That's not just the VIP, that's the whole party. Jennifer's agency is on 45 John Street. And she's got a temp agency going on. That's a sister's doing it for our sales. Mm-hmm. Kanye West, congratulations to you again. Say something arrogant in my head. <laughs> you know what he just said in my head? What? I know, I'm the ish. <laughs> <laughs> now tell him about why, Wendy. Okay, Kanye. Kanye is on Time Magazine's 2005 People Who Matter list, along with Bono, along with Bill and Melinda Gates, along with Bush and Cheney, and Ray Nagin from um, New Orleans, Gina Davis, Darth Vader's on the list. <laughs> and, you know, Kanye was on the cover in August. And you made the list. Congratulations, Kanye West. Very nice. <clears throat> Rolling Stone's got a real good issue coming out, you guys. The issue is the unsolved mystery of the notorious B.I.G. And they are throwing a lot of darts at Suge Knight. It's a 26-page investigation. And it's to the general public. And Mrs. Wallace was... 
shocked at one particular finding. And here's what she says. It was an unnamed individual that was brought out that was affiliated with the crooks. And it was shocking to know that this person that this person knows that person. I don't want to give it away. (laughs) According to Rolling Stone magazine, the killer, it seemed, had exploited a recent uh, person in Biggie's entourage during the extreme friction at that point going on between Death Row and Bad Boy Records. And Mrs. Wallace did not specifically... Well, you know what? Just read it for yourself. But I got to tell you something. According to the theory introduced in the civil uh, trial over the summer, Suge Knight was affiliated with a group of L.A. police officers, um, which, you know, we found out about. And um, there's graphic reaccountment of both Tupac and Biggie's murders. And it's all going to unfold in the Source magazine. The report said that Suge allegedly hired a rival gang member to shoot Tupac in 1996. As Suge sat in the passenger seat of that BMW. The shooting came after the infamous beatdown of Orlando Anderson caught on surveillance camera in the MGM Grand. And Rolling Stone also... Oh, gosh. According to the Rolling Stone report, Suge also ordered the murder of Biggie while locked up in prison for violating his probation because of the Anderson beating. So I don't know, you know, what all's doing. Um, (coughs) But it's a 26-page story. And... I don't know when it's going to be out. Maybe it's out now. I don't know. Is it out now? I don't know. Rolling Stone is, is one of those things. Like, I take the articles from offline. I don't, you know, go out and buy it. You heard about the G-Unit being turned away at the at the Canadian border? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> well, only Olivia and 50 and Lloyd Banks were allowed into Canada. For the tour, Tony Yayo, Mob Deep, MOP, Young Buck were denied entry because of their criminal records. Shout out to Mob Deep. Yeah. <coughs> and a special shout out to MOP. They're going to be in the building for Dons and Divas. Fame is down 15 pounds. And he got his teeth replaced. You know, he had the gold fronts. 50 has him working out and, you know, you know, changing his grill and Billy Dance. Shout out to you, Fox. Shout out to you, Lays. They'll all be in the building. I got to tell you something. If I sound listless, it's probably no different than how you are. It's like the cold weather beats you down, makes you want to go to sleep. And then the strike, whether you drive or whether you take the subway, you were probably up a little bit earlier than normal. And so I was in and out of sleep like all night trying to figure out what the what the do's in. Mm-mm. I guess nobody saw the Billboard uh, or the, the Radio Music Award last night. <coughs> the shooting occurred this past weekend in Minneapolis, unfortunately, and it was sad. A little flip that wasn't connected. That was last, last week, and I was away all last week. I don't know if you guys ever got the, the skinny on that. Like, I think I reported there was a shooting, but I never came back and said, well, Flip has finally spoken out and said that, you know, he and his squad weren't apart. It was a male and a female victim. They suffered um, non-life-threatening gunshot wounds when a bullet, you know, hit each of them. And the bullets, bullets were flying outside the clubs, but the the club, but the victims will recover. So let's go to line number three for James in Brooklyn. He's got a question about acne on one hand, and on the other hand, he's going to Dons and Divas. Hell, <laughs> 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 that sounds crazy to say. How you doing, Wendy? James, you ugly. No, I'm not far from that. Okay. 
far from that. <laughs> never that. Never <laughs> that. And I remember, oh, first of all, Vika S. E. Enon. Huh? Vika, German. Dunker Shane, Vika S. E. Enon. What Did is you come back from Germany? Uh, look, I, would, I wasn't all into it like that. I went over there for the business of hand. Uh, yeah, cool, cool. Respect right. to the German people, but I just, I just, I don't want to, I didn't learn the language, you know? You, you should have picked up, you should have picked Dunker Shane. No, because everybody spoke English, which was great. Oh, I okay, did say, I, I did say, you know, uh, um, uh, no sprechen Sie Deutsch. No, oh, that's excellent. Yeah. If only if I knew what you said. <laughs> How do you know those two words? I was trying to say I don't speak German. No, I think that was Dutch. What is that? I don't speak Dutch? That's Dutch. Damn. No wonder why everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. So what's up? Guess what? Yes, yes, James. Acne, right? Yes. If you take vitamin A, mm -hmm. that is really, really good. Now, I was Mr. Pimpolonian. Okay. Oh, I like that. I was Mr. Newer, Pimpolonian, newer. and I took vitamin A, and my skin cleared up. Now, it fills up the your system. Okay. Now, you never... Uh, did you ever use tea tree oil? Because the tea tree oil... Is oh, really I just thought tea tree oil, because I got like a little um, fungus on my face. It works. It's excellent. Tea tree oil is excellent. Excuse me, fungus face Dawn no, 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 and no, no, Diva. Damn. Why are you ruining the party oh, coming here looking I, I, like I, I, that? Damn, yeah. play up. No, no, no. When I say that, it's a little dry spot. Okay. And we call it psoriasis and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You I need that for your eczema, so stop it, Wendy. I have the psoriasis. I know I get my needle tomorrow morning. Yeah, no, just do that. And guess what? What? My tin of colds is not going to let me live. <laughs> <laughs> they are killing my feet. I got to go get them stretched. stretched. I tried them on the other day to go to a funeral. They're going to kill me, but I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the Dons and Divas. And guess what? What? I went on a job interview today. I was tired. I had to get up. I had to get my little boy to get to school. What? I had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Damn. I wasn't going to go at first this interview. Yeah. They had a hundred people that they called them for the job and yeah. only 20 people showed up. And they only had 20 openings and I am one of them. See, so I start on go. January 6th. That is why that is why this is the time you know, if uh, this transit strike is making us all crazy, but let it serve as, as, as like a, a lesson that, you know, only the strong will maneuver regardless. Well, it's good a for good you. thing, because they shouldn't do that. And I don't like that common Bloomberg said that they're cowards and stuff like that. I didn't realize some people wasn't really making that much money. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. And I want to say this. I get tired of people talking about you. I, I want to punch everybody in their face who be talking. Oh, well, I just hate it. Okay, James. You are the best, Wendy. You are the best. That your, <coughs> your whole BLS is the bomb. I don't listen to nobody else but you. But BLS all day long. And Thank I'm not brown those in the ears. Thank you, James. You are the best. You are the best job. And you as good as if, if my yeah. son was asleep, I'd let you speak to him again. But he's asleep. Oh, we it's... love you to death. Okay, he James. Be, he goes, Damon Dash. <laughs> <laughs> he be saying that, you know. It's a trance Wendy, moment. All you do is talk about me. You don't know me. And all you do is talk about me. Watch what you say. Watch what you say, baby. <laughs> James, I'll see you Thursday. I love you. Love you, too. I'm so looking good and my skin is clear, boo. That, uh, thank you. Bye, James. See you Thursday. Right, peace out. Line, love. line number six is our first call regarding the radio awards. It's from LaToya in Jersey. Hey, LaToya. Hey, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm okay. Trying to get home. Yeah. Um, I just want to call and um, talk to you about Mary because she looked great last night. She sounded great, too. Wow. Yeah, she had the crowd rocking. They gave her. her, like, a standing ovation. She was really nice. Good for her. Yeah, well, thank so, you. You know, say hi to her on Thursday because I'm not going to be able to make it because I ran out of money for Christmas. Oh, so I didn't get to my tickets. All right, but, Latoya. You know, just let her know she has some fans out here really love her because she was great uh, yesterday. All right, and thank you for calling, Latoya. Okay. Take care, Wendy. Bye-bye. So when I got home yesterday, there was um, this package waiting, and I, I opened it up. It was from um, Random House Books. And, you know, Random House is like the big umbrella, uh, big company. And then under Random House, there's, you know, Broadway Books and, you know, so on. And Harlem, you know, all kinds of book companies. But it's all the Random House family. And inside it, it was the teaser for summer of 2006, what all's coming out. And inside it, it was so weird. I've never seen Ritz Harper's name, like, in lights and the book is called uh, Drama is Her Middle Name, The Ritz Harper Chronicles, Volume 1. And then there's a manly picture of me. And then it says, shock, shock, extraordinaire Wendy Williams lets loose with her first in a series of novels based on her alter ego, <laughs> the devilicious radio DJ Ritz Harper. 
Ritz puts the S in shock and the G in gossip. And drama is her middle name. Ritz is a suburban girl on the outside, but inside she's a hustler's hustler who masterfully maneuvers her way into the spotlight after ruining the career of a well-respected newswoman and former college roommate. Ritz's exclusive story rockets her to the top of the ratings and she's rewarded with her very own radio show. Like a talking Venus flytrap, she verbally seduces her on-air guests only to give them excuse me, only to have them for lunch after she spews gossip about their lives. Ritz becomes the darling of the radio station's afternoon slot, but what happens when Ritz goes from drive-time diva to drive-by victim? Has Ritz's big mouth, has Ritz bad mouth the wrong person? Has her signature cat and mouse bomb drop been dropped on her instead? As Ritz lies crumpled on the city sidewalk, all she can do is struggle to maintain consciousness and ask, who did this to me? Who? Readers will salivate as they try to figure out where the... F- I'm not even going on. Anyway, so the Ritz Harper Chronicle will be out in the summer of 2006. And then the follow-up book will be out for your um, read reading uh, for Christmas time, 2006. So um, shout out to my Random House Broadway book family. It, it re- I called my dad right away. Only my dad can relate when it comes to book stuff. I called my dad right away, told him, take me off the speakerphone. I don't want to talk to her. You know, because she, she asks a lot of fandomonium, like, like dopey questions when it comes to the book thing. My father and I, we talk like two sophisticates about, you know, the books and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, you all, I love you for listening. Thank you so much for being here. And, um... You know, once again, shout out to Grandmaster Flash. I know you're just back in the country. I'll be checking with you tomorrow. I got your passes for Dons and Divas. Everybody else, <coughs> keep it here. Vaughn Harper's up next with the Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Williams Broadcast Day.